captain's log. Guybrush Threepwood. Lost at sea for days now. I have no crew or navigational instruments. No provisions except a half-eaten corn dog, and unless I find water soon, I'm surely done for. Only the hope of finding my love, Elaine, keeps me going. And my quest for the fabulous treasure called Big Whoop has left me in this sorry state. I thought it would bring me fame and glory. Instead, it delivered me into the clutches of my enemy, the zombie pirate LeChuck. I had thwarted his evil plot to marry Elaine, and he was after revenge. Uh, really, really thirsty now. If only I could have a small drink of fresh water, I might have the strength to sail on. Oh, but I know there's nothing but ocean for miles and miles. If I could reach land, I might find water and some food. Fruit, maybe. Something to fight off the scurvy and help me get my strength back. Hmm, maybe some bananas. Oh, why do I torture myself like this? I might as well wish for some chicken and a big mug of grog for all the good it'll do me. Oh, my sweet Elaine. Am I cursed to starve here on this ocean without seeing your face just one more time? Am I... Chuck, I just don't feel that way about you. Elaine? By my congealed blood, you'll learn to love me. Sail with me, and I'll make you queen of the dead. I, I can't. I'm washing my hair tonight. Blast me your hair, woman! Can't you see that this salty old sea corpse pines for your every gentle caress? You know, I don't think my father would approve of me dating the undead. And you're probably too nice a zombie pirate for me anyway. Let's just be friends instead. Chuck, you're an evil, foul-smelling, vile, codependent villain, and that's just not what I'm looking for in a romantic relationship right now. Darn your riddles, you saucy female! What do you mean? Ah! Oh! 
You're a bloodthirsty monster who's already kidnapped me once, tortured my friends, and taken from me the only man I ever loved. Guybrush Threepwood. Ah, <sighs> how romantic. Ship ahoy! Threepwood! Fish him out. Guybrush? Guybrush, Threepwood. By my gangrenous gut, I don't know how you escaped my carnival of the damned. But you won't escape the taste of my blade! <laughs> Lass has spirit. -y. Throw him in the hole, and I'll finish him after the battle. Turn loose the long boats and prepare the flaming voodoo cannonball. to get out of here and help Elaine. If I could only get through this one door, well then I could easily overpower the armed guards above, slip over the side, and make for the shore. Quit your mumbling, captive! Blast ye scurvy dogs! This'll make you rue the day! Stand your distance! I'm Guybrush Threepwood. Who are you? I'm the evil pirate Bloodnose, the wickedest fiend ever to sail under the banner of King Death. I'd as soon chew your nose off as look at you. Are you wearing a fake beard? Bloodnose the pirate would not have a fake beard. Yes, it is. It's been glued to your ear hair. Actually, it's a highly sophisticated beard weave, made from the chest and back hair of real pirates. I'm hoping it'll take root if I don't wash it for a while. Hey, wait a minute. You're not a pirate. Wally! Don't you recognize me? It's Guybrush Threepwood. Oh, gee. Hello, Mr. Wood. The last time I saw you, we were prisoners in LeChuck's dungeon. Why would you sign on with a ship of the living dead? Well, Mr. Brush, at first I had some misgivings about it. But thanks to LeChuck's seminars, motivational lectures, and audiobooks on Parrot, I've become a vicious Corsair. You can too. Ask me how. Do you have any literature I could look at? Here. This leaflet explains the basic philosophy I follow. Tell me about these seminars. The seminars really brought things into focus. You don't know how empowering it is to be able to say to yourself, yes, I am a despicable, filthy, villainous pirate, deserving blame and censure, but that pirate is who I want to be. Everyone was really very supportive. We had this great feeling of synergy. Then, LeChuck kicked down the door and said, You lazy scum! Get back to work, or I'll beat you with your own legs! Tell me about these motivational lectures. Well, they weren't lectures as such. It was what LeChuck described as flogging the inner child. I'm not in the mood for sales hype. Set me free, Wally. I can't, Mr. Brush. I'm the evil pirate Bloodnose now. And besides, even if you got up on deck, LeChuck would cut you to ribbons. What's behind that door? Ooh! That's the door to LeChuck's treasure hold. There's heaps and piles of gold and silver. He's brought all the loot he's ever stolen to give to Elaine. LeChuck is convinced that he can buy Elaine's love. Hmm. What are LeChuck's plans? He's been working on a secret weapon 
some incredibly powerful cannonball. He's going to use it to blow down the walls of the fort so his crew can overrun the island. Snap out of it, Wally. That's blood nose to you, you scurvy sea bass. You're a failure as a pirate. Shut your trap, you yellow-bellied blowfish. One more peep out of you, and I'll do you in. Yeah, you in what navy? You scabrous swab. One more word, and I'll let you have it. Try it, shrimpy. That's it. I'm gonna blast you. I'm gonna... I'm gonna... <laughs> Oh, I can't do it. I just can't. Oh, you're right, Mr. Wood. I'm just not a pirate. I'm not ferocious or bloodthirsty or hateful or anything. I'm not even... I'm not even unpleasant. Oh! Ah! Oh, there, there. Wally's fake pirate hook. Oh. 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 Oops. Pretty good at this. Ooh, gross. All the bones and stuff are floating towards the ship. <laughs> I can't quite squeeze past this cannon. <laughs> well. It's a horrible skull. Can I call you Bob? You may call me Murray. I am a powerful demonic force. I am the harbinger of your doom and the forces of darkness will applaud me as I stride through the gates of hell, carrying your head on a pike. Stride? All right, then roll. Roll through the gates of hell. Must you take the fun out of everything? You know, you look great with a melting candle on your forehead. I get the feeling you're not taking me very seriously. No, I am, really. Really? Then let me hear you scream in terror. Oh. <laughs> Why do you villains always laugh so much? I wasn't laughing about anything in particular. Somewhere there's a fish nibbling on my foot and it really tickles. You're about as fearsome as a doorstop. Is it a really evil looking doorstop? Uh, never mind. Was your mother's father bald, too? I'm not bald. I just have a really high widow's peak. How can you see without eyeballs? How can you walk around without a brain? Some things no one can answer. Well, at least now you never have to worry about what to wear. Well, I suppose that's true. And accessorizing is really easy. That's also true. And I look good in hats. There you go. I'm going now. Good. Now, leave me alone. I have a lot of scheming and evil plotting to do. <laughs> I think it would bite me. Hey! It's a skeleton arm. It's a 
sharp cutlass. I could never untie that big enough. Cold steel, feeble cannon restraint rope. <laughs> now, with the demon flames of this voodoo cannonball, I'll blast my significant other into the significant other world. <laughs> That'll show her how much I truly care. <laughs> <laughs> Neptune's navel, that was a close one. Hey, I lost my cutlass when the ship capsized. It's got a zombie ballerina. It's a bag of wooden nickels, some treasure. Hey, there's a big diamond ring behind this bag. It's a diamond ring. Guybrush? Guybrush! I thought I'd lost you forever. Is it really you? Yes, Elaine. Um, did you really mean what you said out there? That I was the only man you ever loved? Uh, well, yes, Guybrush. I guess I did. Elaine, I'm a man of action. A swashbuckler. A rogue. A wanderer. A man who can hold his breath for ten minutes. I have no ties and no regrets. I sail with the wind and go where adventure takes me. But somehow, something always Guy leads me. Guybrush, stop babbling. Elaine, will you marry me? Oh, Guybrush. Oh, Wally? You're alive. But how did you survive the explosion? I was thrown clear. I'm just lucky I wasn't wearing my seatbelt. Wow, Elaine, that's some ring. Thank you, Wally. It's an engagement ring from Guybrush. Hey, that looks just like the big diamond ring that Chuck had in his treasure hold. You know, the one with that ghastly, disfiguring voodoo curse on it? Well, I'm sure Guybrush wouldn't have given you that ring. Anyway, I've got to be going. I hear there's a tattoo removal place on this island that's freckle safe. See you at the wedding. Guybrush! Uh... Oh no, Elaine? She's not gonna be happy about this. <laughs> it's Elaine. I've got to change her back somehow. <laughs> Elaine? Honey? You okay? Can I get you anything? I'll just start lifting that pirate curse then, huh? She must weigh a ton. Uh, no offense. <laughs> Hey, I wonder how many carrots she... No, no, bad idea. Ouch! Neat. Ahoy! I don't think so. Mm, no. <laughs> hmm. 
Oh, it's just you again. Just your most terrifying image of evil revisited. Yeah, right. I bring you warning from the infernal realms. Do not go farther into the swamp. Turn back. Turn back. Darkness will envelop you. <laughs> How'd you get all the way up there? Through sheer force of will. Uh-huh. All right, there was a bunch of those weird voodoo kids. They found me on shore and put me on top of this spike all the time, thinking they were so funny. Do you need me to help you down? Help! I need no help from you foolish mortals. I am Murray, the all-powerful demonic skull. Okay, just thought I'd ask. Don't get me wrong, I do appreciate the offer. Do you know anything about lifting curses? Oh, right. I know a lot about lifting curses. That's why I'm a disembodied talking skull, sitting on top of a spike in the middle of a swamp. You seem bitter. I'm sorry. It's been a rough day. I'd love to stay in chat, but uh, I gotta go. What a relief. It's a big stuffed alligator with an unusually long tongue. Admiral Sweetum's Bit O Jerky Bubblegum. Five cents. Wow, I got a whole pack of gum. How did you just appear like that? I am one gifted with a second sight, adept at manipulating the forces of nature for the benefit of all who enter my door. You're a fashion consultant. Well, yes, but that's not what I was referring to. I am a voodoo priestess. Neat. You're an autumn, by the way. Don't I know you from somewhere? We have known each other for a very long time, Guybrush Threepwood. You've been through much, so it is understandable that you have forgotten me. We met on Melee Island when you were first trying to become a pirate. Hang on a second. Are we gonna do one of those flashback things? They always make me nauseous. No, I'll make this quick. I twice helped you defeat the evil pirate LeChuck, first by preparing the voodoo antiroot, I'm starting to remember. And then again by helping you prepare a voodoo doll of his zombie form. That's right. You've helped so much and I still don't know your name. I am known by many names on many different islands. But names have little importance. You should know this more than anyone, Guybrush Threepwood. Yes, you're right. Hey, are you making fun of me? I wouldn't dream of it. Boy, have I got some stories to tell you. Stories? Y yes, well, I'm sensing a great disturbance. I have to go. But I've got to tell you about LeChuck and Elaine. I'm going to disappear now in a big flash of light. Cover your eyes. No, 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 wait. It started back on Dinky Island. I knew LeChuck was close. I'll be disappearing here any moment. Okay, okay, no stories. Nice place. I love what you've done with it. Thank you. You'll have to excuse the mess. The kids came over to play with their paper voodoo dolls. They're adorable children. Would you like to see some pictures? Perhaps later. Yes, there's no time for that now. I sense that something terrible has happened. Hey, you're good. Something terrible has happened. I finally proposed to Elaine. Congratulations. That doesn't sound so terrible. 
And when I placed the engagement ring on her hand, she was placed under a horrible pirate curse and trapped for eternity as a solid gold statue. Oh, that explains it. I was struck with a wave of overwhelming hatred and anger. Yeah, that LeChuck was a pretty mean guy. I was talking about Elaine. No, there's no time to worry about that now. We have to hurry. Do not panic, Guybrush. She will be safe until we can break the curse. You only have to worry about her being stolen. Where did you hide her? Uh, I just remembered something. I've got to go. You did remember to hide the giant solid gold statue of your girlfriend from all the other pirates on the island. Well, not exactly, but, uh, you know, I... Go, Guybrush, hurry, before you're too late. <gasps> Elaine! <laughs> I've got to get her back. This is so embarrassing. <laughs> Looks like I'm gonna need some more help. <laughs> Someone stolen Elaine. That is unfortunate. It will be difficult to get her back. Do you know who kidnapped her? Not for certain, but I suspect that it's the mangy pirates anchored in Danger Cove. Can you give me something to lift the curse? No, LeChuck's curse is a very powerful one. Fueled by his anger and his intense frustration in dealing with the opposite sex. I have nothing here to lift so powerful a curse, but there is one way. Great, tell me. You have to replace the cursed ring with a pure one of greater or equal value. A good guideline is two months' salary. Where am I going to find a huge uncursed diamond ring? Legends speak of a whopping big diamond ring on Blood Island. Blood Island? I've never heard of it. You will soon become quite familiar with it. But you must be careful, Guybrush. I have foreseen that your journey will be filled with peril and deception. I have also seen that Blood Island will be the place where you will die. Uh-huh. So, uh, any huge uncursed rings on any other islands? No. The value of the ring on Blood Island comes from its emotional significance. It represents a pure, true love, a power greater than any other. Oh, that's sweet. I, I think I have something in my eye. Do not mock the voodoo priestess. How do I get to Blood Island? You will need three things. A map to Blood Island, for the journey is a long and dangerous one. A seaworthy ship to take you there and an experienced crew. Map, ship, and crew. Got it. Well, how will I find the ring on Blood Island? All I can say is that I see a long and painful history connected with that ring. And I feel a great sadness associated with it. You will learn more once you have actually found the island. Blood Island sounds dangerous. You have to come with me. No, I cannot. I have lived on three different islands in the past six years. I do not wish to travel anymore. Besides, this derelict is still an escrow. But who will give me information and advice? You've got to come. You're my only hope. No, Guybrush. There is another. Blood Island, here I come. I finally defeated LeChuck and his skeleton pirates. True evil can never be destroyed completely. But I heard him blow up and everything. You'd be surprised at how much abuse an evil undead zombie pirate can take. What makes you think LeChuck will be back? Some men can search their entire lives and never discover their reason for being. LeChuck has found his to perpetually rise from the dead and torment you and Elaine. It's what he does best. Gee, when you put it that way, it's kind of hard to stay mad at him. Well, how can I finally destroy him for good? 
no one knows. His power seems to grow with every incarnation. You may have dealt with him for now, but this respite can only be temporary at best. When I finally found Big Whoop and was enormously disappointed. Big Whoop is pure evil. You were lucky to escape alive. I can't remember much about it. Just that I was expecting so much more and felt so let down. Yes, it is the source of much of LeChuck's power. I'm never going back there again. I have foreseen otherwise. You will return to Big Whoop and confront LeChuck once again. Thanks for your help. Gotta go. It's locked. The Long John Silver Center for the Performing Arts presents Spear. I wonder if there's a part in this play for a dashing rogue pirate. Looks like a nice coat with just a few flakes of unsightly dandruff. Looks too big for me. It looks like there's something inside the pocket of this coat. There's a glove in here. That's weird, I didn't think dandruff moved. Oh! I don't wanna look like a jackass. Yeah, yeah, I know what you're thinking. So knock it off. Watch me make this disappear. It's empty. Or is it? Nothing up my sleeve? Presto! Hey, it worked! There's something inside. The A, V, C's of ventriloquism. To swab or not to swab? No, no, that's not right. Yo. I'm a dangerous pirate. Who are you? Cromwell. Slappy Cromwell. It's not my real name, actually. My agent told me my given name just didn't have star quality. What was your given name? Rex Fortune, adventure seeker. I see. What's that putrid, stench-ridden drivel that you're rehearsing? But this, this is the master work of the Bard. Do you really think it's that bad? Do pirates drink grog? Oh, I knew I shouldn't have altered the material. How could I have taken up my wretched pen and stabbed it bodkin-like through the unsullied poetry of the master? You rewrote Shakespeare? I was compelled to. Not a single person was coming to any of my performances. Oh, these stupid, brutish pirates! Not men enough to confront their own sensitive inner natures. 
So I rewrote the whole folio, contracted the brilliance of decades into a 45-minute review. Spear, a theatrical midday. Why can't you go back to the original scripts? Oh, the sweet, sweet, bitter irony of it all. Now that you have confirmed that I have produced a work of unredeemable trash, I'm more or less guaranteed to have a financial success on my hands. Why do I find that strangely encouraging? Can I watch you rehearse your horrible play? I'd rather you didn't. I get nervous when people watch. Of course. Can I join your show? Let me be blunt. You just don't have the hands of a spear carrier. You have no idea how often I hear that. Acting is my life. Let me join your show. I was a tree in my kindergarten play. We already have a tree. Oh. Carry on. Come on, Slappy. You've got to get this right. The show opens today. So how'd you get roped into doing this show? I'm a spokesmodel, actually. But what I really want to do is act. People just don't take you seriously when you're a spokesmodel. How surprising. Yeah, isn't it? Break a peg leg. Thanks. Then I kill Caesar, follow that up with a little soft shoe. Excuse me. Come on, let me watch you rehearse. I'd rather you didn't. And stop whining. Please, can I watch you rehearse? I'd rather you didn't. You might see the surprise ending to Romeo and Juliet. Romeo and Juliet die. Actually, that ending didn't set well with the focus groups. Please, can I watch you rehearse? I'd rather you didn't. Then you'll hear all the answers to my knock-knock jokes. Please, can I join your show? Sorry, this is a one-man show. Hey, what am I, chopped liver? No, not liver. Liver has a more appealing stage presence. Of course, what I really want to do is direct. Why? I've always dreamed of my own production, Titus Andronicus on ice. Brilliant! Carry on. What fools these men with morals be? It's an informative plaque put up by the Plunder Island Naturalist Society, Prop Tree. Fake trees of this genus were often used by early settlers for theatrical productions. Oh, I'm never going to get ready for this performance. Welcome, patrons, to the Barbary Coast, where every haircut is an adventure. Aye, and if you're wanting a haircut, you'll have to wait until I'm finished with Captain Rottingham here. Are you guys pirate barbers? We prefer the term buccaneer hairstylists. Great, maybe you guys can help me find this huge diamond ring I'm looking for. Diamond ring? Yeah, it's supposedly enormous, and it's on Blood Island. Blood Island? Never heard of it. It's a funny story, really. I need it to lift this curse that's turned my girlfriend into a solid gold statue. Solid gold? Wait a second, did I just share too much? Ahoy there, I'm Guybrush Threepwood, mighty pirate. Of course you are. Okay then, who are you? Edward Van Helgen. Not the. That's right, mine is the name that pirates fear the most. Edward Snugglecakes Van Hell. Dude! How would you like to join my ever-growing pirate crew? Your crew? Why would I want to be on your crew? It's gonna be a blast. We're going to Blood Island. Sorry, Threepwood. As much as I'd love to be out at sea again, I could never serve a captain who wasn't a gentleman and who wasn't my equal. Gentlemen? That's me all over. Then prove it. If you can defeat me in a gentleman's duel, I'll join your crew. All right, let's get to dueling. 
No, no, no. There are rules. If you want to duel with me, you have to give me sufficient insults. Mm, okay. Did I mention you're a big old bedwetting duty head? No, but I'm still not impressed. How appropriate. You fight like a cow. That's an old one. Come back when you have some fresher material, eh? I don't want to insult you. Why can't we just get along? You went from pirating to hairstyling. Why? The music of the sea is something that takes hold of your soul and never lets go. But the life of a sailor is a rough one, and the sea shows no mercy. It was no easy choice to leave, but I realized that I could still enjoy the music of the sea while remaining safely on land. Through affordably priced sea shanty compilation albums? Uh, no. By starting a barbershop quartet, obviously. Obviously, but there are only three of you. Auditions didn't go as well as we'd hoped. We once had a tenor named Dominique, but he left. Artistic differences. <laughs> oh, my feet are killing me. What was that? Huh? Oh, uh, I'm sorry, my mind was wandering. Please, go on. Well, we spent so much time coming up with a clever name for the shop, we realized we were going to have to give up singing and actually become barbers. But I still like to think that we're not just cutting hair. That maybe, just maybe, we're teaching people a little bit about themselves. I bet you have a ton of cool pirate stories. No, I couldn't. Oh, come on, I'd really like to hear some of... The year was 1675. We were on a course towards the wreck of the rattling phlegm. Our days were filled with songs of the voyage and the untold riches we'd find at our destination. Two months into our journey, we realized something was horribly wrong. Was it some kind of seasickness? In a manner of speaking, we were all stricken with a melody, a diabolical song that I shall never forget. La 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 Hey, that's kind of catchy. Aye, all too catchy for a crew of 50 men confined to a ship hundreds of miles from port. No one could think of anything else, and many threw themselves into the sea rather than hear any more of the incessant humming. We returned with but eight of our crew left. The doomed voyage of the obsessivo compulsivo will haunt me forever. Whoa, look at the time. Gotta scoot. Now there's a challenge. To the field of honor. Choose your weapon. It's the lid to the box of pistols. I choose this pistol. If I beat you, will you join my crew? The odds of you beating me are so astronomical, I will take that bet. <laughs> Again, I prove to you I'm the greatest duelist in the world. Haven't I shamed you enough? You haven't even begun to see me shamed. Back to the field of honor, then. Choose your weapon. I choose the banjo. I accept. You do? What's the matter, brush boy? Can't you keep up? I'm sorry, I just lost myself in the beauty of the melody. Would you like to try again? Sure, I'm just getting warmed up.
pretty good boy. Let's see you follow this. He's good. I'll never beat him. shot my banjo. You can't be sure of that. That shot may have come from the grassy knoll. Of all the low-down tricks, I never heard of anything so low. I completely misjudged you. You are a pirate after all. I'd be proud to join your crew. Great. I'll just pack this stuff up and get ready. And give me back my gun. I'll need two more sailors for my crew. It's a bunch of combs floating in that blue stuff. Ah, hands off that comb or I'll have your bangs, you thieving dog. Ahoy there, I'm Guybrush Threepwood and I'm a mighty pi- Quiet. Red, huh? Don't distract him while he's working on me. Aye, laddie, you'll have to wait your turn. It's the pirate way. Station. You've been struck with the hair demons. What are you talking about? The cursed head vermin, the scourge of every hygienic sailor on the seven seas. That's a lie. Sure as I'm standing here, they're wriggling about your scalp like a pack of wretched sea lions. Good analogy. This calls for drastic action. I'm bringing in old Ironsides. No, no, let's not be too rash. Rash? That's a bad sign. There's no time to lose. I'm going to have to amputate. No, no, you'll ruin my hair! Ahoy there, I'm Guybrush Threepwood, here to serve all your mighty pirate needs. Pleasure to meet you, Guybrush. I am Haggis McMutton of the Clan McMutton. I sure could use a haircut. Have a seat, laddie, and I'll do you up with a fine quaff. It's a rock, and it's a paperweight. I can't reach it. I'm too low. Blast that ineffectual paperweight. I'll have to go find another. But what about my haircut? Keep your skirt on, lad. Wow, I bet those could cut through anything. Searched the whole island, and I couldn't have find a single rock for a paperweight. I suppose I'll just have to eyeball your haircut. I just remembered I have another appointment. Oh, I was going to give you a French braid, too. How would you like to join my crew? You seem like a nice enough sort, Guybrush. But a man cannot serve as my captain unless he earns me respect. And how would a man go about doing that? By besting me in a time-honored test of strength. The 500-meter bucket full of heavy rocks relay? No, I'm talking about the traditional highland display of strength and virility, the caber toss. What in the world is a caber? The caber is a large tree trunk. We go to the field of competition, and each of us heaves the caber as far as he can. The man whose caber goes the farthest is the winner. That's just about the st 
stupidest sport I've ever heard of. And I watch cable television. Hey, but you kind of argue with tradition. Sounds great. Let's do it. I would never follow such a weak captain. Ahoy there! I'm Guybrush Threepwood, mighty pirate. So? So, it's good to meet you, Mr... Bill. Bill? That's your pirate name? Bill? Cutthroat Bill. Oh, I see. Well, that puts a whole new spin on it, doesn't it? Are you ever going back to pirating? Maybe. Someday. If I find the right captain. Perfect! I'll be your captain. Onward to Blood Island and high adventure. Wanna come? You a captain? Hardly. I'm the mighty pirate who defeated LeChuck. And what do you have to show for it? I've got a ton of cool stories. Treasure? Immense mounds of gold and diamonds? Solid gold scepters of power? Anything? Well, I've got these nickels. Wooden? Uh, yeah. Some treasure hunter you are. You couldn't find gold in a jewelry shop. I bet I could find gold on this very island. How much would you bet? Well, I've got these nickels. Right. Come back when you have some real treasure to show me. How'd you break into the hairstyling industry? I saw an ad to join a barbershop quartet. Got a problem with that? No, that must be very rewarding work. What's that supposed to mean? Mean? Well, just that, you know, cutting hair and um, singing must be just a lot of fun. It's like a party every day. Some days I just don't know how to contain my joy. I get giddy and the laughter bubbles out of me like a sparkling fountain of mirth and gaiety. Okay, new topic. Say, uh, what you eating there? Jawbreaker. Is it good? Yep. You don't say much, do you? Nope. It's been a pleasure. Bye. You know, I really appreciate you taking the time to talk to me. I think we've, well, we bonded. How did you do that? Oh, it was nothing, really. Just sudden pressure applied below the sternum to expel a foreign object from the windpipe. That's amazing. I owe you my life. From now on. Yes? From now on, that will be known as the Threepwood Maneuver. Nah. Feeling down because your chicks turned to gold? Come to the swamp, get your fortune told. Voodoo and things. Formerly just voodoo. Visit our new location on Plunder Island. Danger Cove. What a strange flower. Wow, this jungle is thick. I'll need something sharp if I'm going to hack my way through there. I wonder if this plaque says something about the flower I just cut. Ipecac, Cephalus ipecacuana, one of the creeping vines common throughout Plunder Island. The syrup made from the ipecac flowers was used by the early settlers of Plunder Island as a purgative.
I wonder what this sign means. Snake crossing? What possible harm could a snake? Ooh. Well, this isn't good. I can't reach it. I can't reach it. It makes syrup of Ipecac. That seems logical. <laughs> Whew. That sure was a close one. I thought for sure when I got eaten by that snake that I was done for. Thank goodness I'm safe. No. Hey. Hang on, the quicksand is sucking all the cool stuff I found in that snake from my pants. Now there's an odd sensation. Papa Pichu Bush. Discovered by Plunder Island's indigenous peoples, this bush is named after a native word meaning youch. Quicksand pit. Quicksand pits of this type are common throughout Plunder Island's nature trails. Many an unwary traveler has found himself trapped and unable to escape. Uh-oh, someone, anyone, please, please help me, I'm sinking? It looks dangerous. Well, I... neat, a world-class pea shooter. I can't move anywhere in this quicksand. Perfect. For once today, things are going... Well, darn. Hey. Thank goodness for those unpredictable Caribbean trade winds. It makes the boat completely unseaworthy. Those must be the pirates who've taken a lane. It's the bay. Do you have a reservation? Of course I have a reservation. Then let's see your reservation slip. Very good. You may seat yourself, Mr. Uh, pardon me. Mrs. Brinestoop. He's awfully reserved for a pirate. I don't need a whole barrel. I'll just take one.
Hey, mister. Mister, you listening? Ah! It's one of LeChuck's skeletal horde. Aye. I fix his little red dinghy, but good. Mm, the undead that walk among us must surely be destroyed, lest their evil like overrun and befoul the world of the living. Aye. And he complained about me checking. Oh. It says, ask me about Grim Fandango. This is the greasiest, crustiest, most revolting chicken I've ever seen. Ah, yes. He got our black and Cajun style chicken. Just the right amount of exotic flavor. It's a good thing, Joe, because I can't keep them out of the food around here. Yeah. Brimstone Beach Club. Member since 1632. Excuse me, but... What a lucky pirate are ye! Me? You've struck gold, boy! I have? Gold, gold, gold! Ha <laughs> ha! Gold and nuggets of chicken! Oh. A treasure trove of deep-fried fun! <laughs> now, what can kindly old Captain Blondebeard bring ye for lunch? I'll try the wishbone sandwich with sweet gherkins. We're out of that, I'm afraid. Actually, I'm out of just about everything. Not a drumstick left. All I have left are those biscuits and a few tubs of our special Ipecac slaw. How's the Ipecac slaw? Not bad. But 15 minutes later, you'd be hungry again. Would you like to join my crew and sail the Blood Island? What? Leave me shop unguarded? Why, you treacherous tripe? You're lucky I don't take out me whisk and run you straight through. Whoa, whoa, calm down. I was just asking. Sorry. I'm as edgy as a beached whale in Nantucket. What's wrong? There be a horror that prowls the jungles of Plunder Island. A seven-foot-tall monster he be, and he has a hatred for mankind unequaled. His preternatural rage burns hotter than the coals used to roast a million of his kin. He is El Pollo Diablo, the Devil Chicken. The Devil Chicken! The Devil Chicken. He hates me most of all. And his revenge against me must be tastier than me hearty giblets and cracklins party mix. What's he done? He turned loose all me chickens, returned them to the wild to roam the jungles free as nature intended. Even now, I have a huge order to fill and no chicken to fill it. But I know he's not through. Ruining me business is just the first step. Someday he'll return. For me! But mark this. I'll be ready for him. And a seven-foot chicken means me business will be thriving once more. To whom are you going to deliver your chicken? There lies a pirate ship in Danger Cove. And the first mate of that ship fancies me chicken. But I better be delivering their chicken soon. Most likely I won't even have time to cook it. Why is that? You see, I gots me this delivery in 30 days or it's free policy, and I'd be running a bit behind. What are the pirates of Danger Cove like? They're a secretive lot, and I can't say I've seen too much of them. They seem to be what one would expect from a bunch of grog swinging pirates. As filthy and hairy a bunch of swabs as you'd ever hope to meet. But beware of their captain. From what I hear, he's got the disposition of a shark in need of a root canal. If he be catching you near his boat, you'll be tortured for sure. How long have you been out of chickens? 
Weeks? Months, maybe. And it's not the loss of business that hurts me the most. No? I miss the taste of me chicken. You can dine this world over, but you'll never be a connoisseur of carrion till you had a taste of me savory squab. Why, even now, I got me a craving for me palate-pleasing poultry. Ah, I can taste it now. Me crispy bounty of breaded beaks. There'd be nothing like the hearty crunch from these pan-fried jewels. Isn't that a little hard on your teeth? Aye, but the challenge of it all be half the dining enjoyment. Now that I got the thought of that crispy chicken extremity in me head, I'll be pining for the crunch till I get me something to crack me teeth on. Nice gold tooth you have there. Aye! It glistens like the golden topping of grease on me luscious batter-fried chicken. Don't you ever like to get outside the shop? Aye! I love the outdoors, especially the beach. Why, I'm in fact a member of the Brimstone Beach Club in Smorgy. Been a member there for years. How did you become a member? I threatened to run them all through. Then I lost me membership card. Last time I remember having it, it was in me breast pocket. I believe I was in the kitchen preparing some grub. Then I had that awful sneezing fit. Oh, that was bad. No matter, I guess I'll just have him issue me a new one. I'll let you get back to work. Aye. It's the window to the outside. Would you like this jawbreaker? Thanks to ye. Ouch! I think I loosed me gold tooth. Arf, I knew sweets were being bad for me teeth, but it had a fine crunch and were a fiesta of flavor. From now on, I'll be sticking to fleshier foodstuffs. Something, something chewy. Well, there I go again. This old salt's got a craving for something to squish between me teeth. Would you like some gum? Thanks. Hmm. This is really good steak-flavored gum. It gets you here. And it gets you right here. Why, you little scam. <laughs> That's quite a funny trick you've played on old Cap and Blonde Beard. Hey! Where do you think you be going in such a hurry? I don't suppose you know where me missing gold tooth be? Uh, no. Then what do you call that, then? Oh, that. I thought it was a rock in my shoe. I was going to take it outside. Sure you was. Give it back. More gum? Yeah, it looks like you swallowed the last piece I gave you. Thanks. Hmm. <laughs> Pop me bubble, did you? You caught me again. Tastes like sirloin. The gold tooth is in the gum. It's fun, but I need to use it with something else. Oh, that's made my voice sound funny.
cool. Wait one second. Do you have me, Gold Tooth? Uh, no. Let me see. You don't have it. Darn, I'll have to order a new one. I wonder where that tooth fell. I won't be able to find anything in this mud by fishing around with my hand. It's the gold tooth! Check this out. Is that real gold? I guess you can find treasure. So you'll join my crew? Sure, as long as my partners will join too. I'll need one more sailor for my crew. Pastoral looking beach. Caribbean rubber tree. One of the many rubber trees common throughout the Caribbean used as raw material for shipbuilding. Sumatran rubber tree. Donated to Puerto Pollo by our Sumatran sister city of Vacaville. This tree is the only one of its kind in the entire Western Hemisphere and stands as an everlasting symbol of the friendship between our two cities. It's a large rubber plug. It's an enormous keg of old Gut Blast brand rum. It's a wooden sawhorse supporting that keg of rum. It's a trail of rum leaking from the keg. Whoa, my head is spinning. I gotta lay off the rum. Are you sure you don't want to join my crew? It's as I told you, Guybrush. Not until you can vest me in the cable toss. Sounds great. Let's do it. <laughs> hey, I win! By the spiraling bouffant to be great Uncle McManus! Never before have I seen such strength! Sure, I'll join your crew. I'll wait at the shop until you're ready to leave. Well, I got my whole crew. A 
barrel of grog. And a chicken. <laughs> Look at all this stuff, mate. Oh, that must have been some battle. Let's pull up anchor and make for Skull Island. King Andre will pay through the nose for all this loot. Wait a minute. There's something else. It's, uh... It's, uh, it's some kind of footwear. Hey, those are nice boots. <laughs> but they're still hot. Ow, 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 ow. Yes, may I help you? My name is Guybrush Threepwood, and I'm a mighty pirate. Threepwood? You must be seersucker Skip Rackham's cousin. How are Muffy and the twins? Uh, who? Hey, it's a lovely afternoon for the beach today. Not too crowded yet. There's a crafts workshop on the south beach, and a swabber size glass at two and four. Water's warm, and the waves aren't too high. Just watch out for the occasional undead corpse washing up on shore. Might want to keep the kids away from any rotting flesh. But otherwise, the siege early today shouldn't spoil your afternoon. Just between you and me, the undead are notoriously bad tippers. So it's just as well they didn't take over the island, eh? <laughs> Let me see your membership card and we'll fix you right up. Why? You're at the Brimstone Beach Country Club in Smorgie, part of the Leisure Lovers Planned Community for Retired Pirates. It's very exclusive. I'm afraid if you don't have a membership card, you cannot use any of the club's amenities. I don't want an amenity. I had to eat one of those while I was lost at sea and it was terrible. Then let me also point out that without that membership card, you are not permitted on the beach, you cannot use any of our towels, and you can't have anything from the grill. Good day. Excuse me. Yes, you filthy little man. My card. Let me see that. Oh, no! In the name of all things clean, you've got a membership. Yes. And I think I'll just take one of your fluffy clean towels and enjoy a nice, relaxing stroll down your beach. No! You mustn't! I must. And perhaps I'll sunbathe nude. Sweet mother of pearl, no! Now that I think about it, it is nice out on the far end of the beach. You should go there. You should go there now. Oh, cabana boy. Yes. It's quite hot. Put your towel and mop my brow, would you? Can I have another look at that card of yours? Uh, actually, the towels are right here. I'll just help myself. May I please have some of your oil? That oil is solely for the use of the fry station technician. It's an ice bucket for a bottle of sparkling grog. Nice fluffy towel. This towel. Papa Bishu! holes in my shoes, I'll never get across that hot beach. Mm. 
nice fluffy towel. The towels are all wet now. I'll just take one more. Nice fluffy towel. The towels are all wet now. I'm Guybrush Threepwood. Very nice to meet you, Mr. Threewood. I am Pallido, Pallido Domingo. I am so glad you're here. Finally, someone on this island with some manners. And my drink needs refreshing. Take it away and bring me another. I don't think you understand. I'm a mighty pirate. I'm sorry, babe. I really sincerely am. Perhaps I didn't use the magic word. Take this drink away and bring me another. Now! Wow, you're pale. Look, babe, I haven't been sunbathing for very long, so cut me some slack. How long have you been out here? Since April. I've seen correctional fluids with better color than you. Yeah, babe, I'm not the tannest cat around, but as you can see, I'm working on it. You look like you've lived under a rock your whole life. My complexion is a little on the light side, I'll give you that. But soon I'll be a bronze god. You've got the savage pale. Please, babe. If you say any more, I will become very self-conscious. Hey, I can see my reflection in your chest. Thank you for your keen insight, my friend. Why don't you go do something useful now? Like inhale a puffer fish. Okay, babe? Would you like to join my crew? Oh, no, babe. I'm not a sailor. I make my living off the hard work and talent of others. You're a project leader on a computer game? No, no. I'm a high-powered talent agent. Major stars. We're talking major stars here. I'm looking for Blood Island. Do you know where it is? Nope. Never heard of it. Are you sure you don't know how to get to Blood Island? I told you before, babe. I've never heard of Blood Island. See you around. Hello there, Sonny. You open yet? Oh boy, oh boy! My first customer. Gee willikers, is this gonna be swell. Hi, my name's Kenny. Kenny Foulmouth. It sure would be neat if you would buy some of my lemonade. It only costs a nickel. And best of all, I have a bottomless mug policy. That does sound like a good deal. Is the lemonade good? Oh gosh, yes. It's a very helpful drink. Even better for you than placing leeches on your tongue. Wow. I'd like to buy some lemonade. Sure. We have a bottomless mug policy, you know. That'll be a nickel. Hey, 
Hey, there's no bottom to this mug. Give me my money back. I'm sorry. I did tell you about our bottomless mug policy, and there are no refunds. Why, you little... Thank you. Come again. Look, a three-headed monkey. Oh, boy, oh, boy. Gee willikers, is this gonna be swell? Hey! Just because you're a grown-up doesn't mean you can waste my time. Give me some more lemonade, you little chiseler. That'll be a nickel. Ah, that was as refreshing as morning dew. Hey! How did you drink all the lemonade? You switched mugs on me, you cheap. I hope you're happy. You put a budding young entrepreneur out of business. It's a great big vat full of red dye. Number two. It's full of dye now. I've brought you a new mug. Thanks. Here's your drink, sir. Look, Palido, you're burning. All those months in the sun and my tan is just gonna peel away. I better turn over. Good idea. I'll never memorize that map. It's far too complex. I can't just rip the map off his back. I didn't have to do that. It's the map to Blood Island. Peeled off Palado's back. Nice boots, huh? Sorry. Hey, what do you know? I really am big bone. Uh-oh, quiet. Here comes Captain LeChuck. Lovers, set sail for my stronghold on Monkey Island. I'll unleash my entire army of the undead. This time, Elaine will be mine. Ah, Elaine. It will be a sweet day in hell when you feel the fiery breath of my kiss on your lips and become my undead bride. And I'll destroy any man who dares get in my way! Suffering sailors, tis good to be dead! <laughs> The plug is all pasty now. Perfect.
Either it's a time-honored form of pirate torture, or just a loose board. Fifteen men on a dead man's... Huh. Who are you? I'm Guybrush Threepwood, and I'm a mighty pirate. Well, we'll just see how your threats sit with my captain. Your captain? Yes, Threepwood. You've come aboard the Sea Cucumber. I am Mr. Bossy, and the first mate. And my captain? Why, he's the scourge of the seven seas. The dread pirate. Let's you... Yes, captain. It's on the table, sir. Look up. That's right. Captain Lich. Yes, Captain. Just an intruder, sir. I'm dealing with him. He says you're to be tortured. Choose your punishment. You can either be tarred and feathered, or you can walk the plank. Feathered sounds good. How about just feathered? No. Sorry. Well, I suppose we'll have to go with walking the plank. We're trying to avoid using the tar and feathers. It's messy, and we need to save the tar for emergency leak repair. What do you say, men? Can we make him walk the plank? <laughs> What's that, Captain? Handles. Well, it looks like we're having technical difficulties, Streepwood. So we'll have to drag out the tar and feathers after all. <laughs> What do I do now? Hmm. I don't know. We've never done this before. Aren't you humiliated? I guess so, but no more than usual. Well, just get lost then. Madre de Dios! It's el Pueyo Diablo! Yes, I have released your prisoners, and now I've come for you. Well, you're not taking me without a fight. Ugh, this chicken grease washed off all the feathers. Whoops, I better keep quiet. Absolutely, Captain. I'll get right on it after I have my dinner. What's that, Captain? I eat too much fried chicken. Well, I, I've just got a weakness for chicken, that's all. I know you don't have any weaknesses, Captain LeChimp. You're an overachiever, a doer. Well, I'm just a tiny little fly. LeChimp? The Captain is an ape? Well, if the Captain is an ape, then Mr. Fossey must be... Aye, aye, Captain! Fresh bananas for the whole crew! An utter loon. What's that, Captain? Your parasites are bothering you. Well, of course I'll groom you, sir. You know, sir, finding this gold statue may be just the boost our crew needs. What, with the riches we get from this, we can get new and better ships and become the terror of the Caribbean! That must be the map to where they've buried Elaine. I think Mr. Fossey is the only guy who can talk to him. If he knows I'm here, he might do something even more horrible to me. <clears throat> Mr. Fossey, 
I've been thinking. Are you all right, Captain? You sound different. Don't interrupt. <laughs> Sorry, sir. Maybe it's time we gave up pirating. I mean, take a look around at me and the rest of the crew. We're all monkeys. You mean in the Darwinian sense, sir? No, I mean in the quite literal sense. Uh, have you noticed that the crew is happier swinging from the masts than swabbing the decks? I don't even want to mention what they've been flinging around the ship. Are you suggesting that I'm not disciplining the crew enough? No, I'm suggesting that we all give up this charade and go back to the trees. That's the life for a monkey, not sailing the seas for months on end. Well, if you feel so strongly about it, sir, I suppose I can't argue. I think our last order of business should be to dig up that statue and... It'll be tough on the men, sir, but I'll tell them that you think it best. Okay, but first we should dig up that statue and give it to... I'll make sure they understand that it's not their fault. Very good, and then we can dig up that statue and... Okay, never mind then. That must be the map to where they've buried Elaine. I think Mr. Fossey is the only guy who can talk to him. It smells like something's burning. Must be this shoddy 17th century electrical wiring. Wait a second. Somebody's been monkeying around with these controls. Must be where Elaine is buried. And now, the moment I know you've all been waiting for. How about some amazing juggling? It looks like he's gonna juggle these cannonballs. Uh-oh, it looks like he's coming for the cannonballs now. And now, the ultimate Shakespearean delight. The famous cannonball juggling scene from Romeo and Juliet. Whoa! Oops! <laughs> I'm glad it had a happy ending and he got the, um, got the girl in the end. It's Yorick's headstone from Hamlet. <laughs> Elaine should be safe up in the crow's nest, for now. Well, I've got a crew, a map, a ship, and finally got Elaine back. So let's say we head on to Blood Island. 
to lift the curse and save Elaine. How about it, guys? Let's get moving towards Blood Island. Let's head on out and find our fortune, guys. This might be more difficult than I first imagined. Ah, the sea. I, the sea. Makes you glad to be alive. I think that ship is following us. Feel that salty spray. The sunlight sparkling off the bay. What a glorious seafaring day. It's a pirate ship. We've got to outrun her. All right, men, are you with me? Hey, look, guys, a whale. Where? Where? That ship is gaining on us. Cutthroat Bill, rig the topsail. Is that a right whale? No, no lie. They're boarding us. Crew, help me out here. It is a member of the CETA's suborder, Mr. Shetty, though. I think you're right. Well, well. Runningham, so it's you. What do you want? Other than a good toupee. I've come for your map to the fabled blood alarm. Then I'll find the diamond you mentioned. It will make a fun paperweight for my escritoire. Ooh, look! It's breaching! Ooh! Ah! Look, Baldy, I'll never give you that map. I need it to save Elaine. Then I'll have to take it from you by force. That whale must be 30.5 meters. 100 feet. And weigh 200 metric tons. You know, of course. In a sword fight, a sharp wheat is much more important than a sharp blade. Of course. Everybody knows that, Chrome Dome. Let's get this over with. Every enemy I've met, I've annihilated. Oh, yeah? Well, you fight like a cow. No, 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 no. That's not right at all. What? On the sea, we fight it a little differently. On the sea, all your insults and threats have to rhyme. What? So when I say every enemy I've met, I've annihilated, you say... I once found some gold, but it was just electroplated? No. You say, with your breath, I'm sure they are suffocated. Let's try that again, shall we? You're as repulsive as a monkey in a negligee. Uh... I'm waiting. I... Uh, I... Just as I thought. You're an amateur with this world. Give me that map. Here, take it. That's your map? Yeah. As soon as I'm through pirating these waters, it's off to blood alone. Until we meet again, Monsieur Tweebud. I've got to get that map back or we'll never find Blood Island. Thanks, guys. You were a world of help back there. It was a rousing battle, Captain. Aye, and it reminds me of a song. We're a band of vicious pirates. A sailing out to sea. When you hear a gentle singing. You'll be sure to turn and flee. Oh, this is just ridiculous. Let's go defeat that evil pirate. We know he's sure to lose, cause we know just where to fire it. We're thieving balladeers. A gang of cutthroat mugs. To fight us off, you won't need guns. Just jolly good ear plugs. A pirate I was meant to be. Trim the sails and roam the sea. Come on, men. We've got to recover that map. That pirate will be done for when he falls into our trap. We're a club of tune for rovers. We can sing in every clef. We can even hit the high notes. It's just too bad we're tuned deaf. A pirate I was meant to be. Trim the sails and roam the sea. All right, crew. Let's get to work. Our vocation's a thing we love, a thing we'd never shirk. We'll fight you in the harbor. We'll battle you on land. When you meet singing pirates, there'll be more than you can stand. Oh, that was a good one. No, it wasn't. I'm getting so sick of you guys and your rhyming. We're ready to set sail, though the cannons need a priming. We're troublesome corsairs. And we've come to steal your treasures. We would shoot you on the downbeat. But we got to rest my measures. A pirate I was, was meant to be. Trim the sails and roam the sea. Stop, stop, stop. The brass 
is what for polish and the deck is what for mop. You say you're nasty pirates, steaming, thieving, bad bushwhackers. From what I've seen, I tell you, you're not pirates, you're just slackers. A pirate I was meant to be. Trim the sails and roam the sea. We'll surely avoid scurvy if we all eat an orange. And, um... Well, uh... Door hinge? No, no. Guess the song's over then. Guess so. Okay, back to work. Well, gee, I feel a little guilty now. Captain. Yes, Mr. McMahon. We were wondering, we were, just what kind of captain you are. What do you mean, Haggis? Well, some captains are men of action. They like to have complete responsibility and control for their ship. Other captains prefer to concentrate more on the thinking aspects of captaining. The captain who's a man of action will undoubtedly have a much more difficult time of defeating other scoundrels of the sea in the fast-paced realm of ship-to-ship -ship combat. The more academic captain will find the other pirate vessels he meets to be less aggressive and therefore far easier and quicker to defeat in combat. I see. So, Captain Threepwood, which type of captain be ye? I think I'd rather let you guys help me out. Easy ship combat it is. You'd best sail away before you get hurt. Give me your treasure and I'll let you live. Ha! Every enemy I've met, I've annihilated. I am rubber, you are glue. You're as repulsive as a monkey in a negligee. I look that much like your fiance? Throughout the Caribbean, my great deeds are celebrated. I'd have a good comeback, but it's hard to get motivated. You can't match my witty repartee. Support your local PTA. Give me your treasure. Well, if I had any, you'd be the first one to get it. Arr. I guess I need more practice with this sword fighting stuff. Hey, at least I showed him in the high seas combat part. Boarding a pirate ship can be hazardous to your life. I'm Guybrush Threepwood, a mighty pirate. Don't make me laugh. Throughout the Caribbean, my great deeds are celebrated. I'm shaking, I'm shaking. You can't match my witty repartee. I am rubber, you are glue. You're as repulsive as a monkey in a negligee. I am rubber, you are glue. You win! Give me your treasure. You reeking, musty, stench-soaked freebooter. Take it. It was cluttering up me hold anyway. We're loaded with booty. Well, well, well. I guess you've learned an important lesson about cheating. I sure have, mister. Golly, I'll never cheat on anyone ever again. Honest. I've got a new business now, and gosh, it's swell. What is it? I'm running guns. Tell me you're lying. I never lie anymore, mister. You've shown me the light. Can I interest you in some shrapnelizing ammunition designed to bring exquisite pain and unreasonable suffering to all your enemies? What do you have for sale today? Today, customer name here, uh, what's your name again? Guybrush Threepwood. Today, Mr. Cheap Hood, I can offer you the complete line from Bob's Big Board Boomer Brand Cannon Incorporated. 
To start with, we have the entry-level model, the Buccaneer's Buddy. We also have the following Canon models available. The Ouchmaster, the Homemaker Deluxe, the Pain Giver 2000, Mr. Massacre, and finally, the Canon used by that most fearsome scoundrel, Rene Rottingham himself, the Destructomatic T47. So, can I interest you in any of these models, mister? I'll take the Destructomatic T47. You just ordered the Destructomatic T47 armor piercing carnage delivery system with auto loading and fax motor. Quite a fine piece of hardware, if I do say so myself. Now, will that be doubloons, jewels, captured maidens? My ship's hull's full of booty. Well, the amount in your treasure hold is not enough for this model. Not even if I take your old cannon and give you credit for the trade-in. Can I interest you in a less expensive model? I'll take the Buccaneer's Buddy. The Buccaneer's Buddy it is. Let me just check my stock. Yep, we got him. You will not be disappointed, my friend. I'll have my mom install your new cannon Prano. While she's at it, I'll also have her pick up the appropriate amount from your hold and pick up your trade-in. Mom! Boarding a pirate ship can be hazardous to your life. I'm Guybrush Threepwood, a mighty pirate. Don't make me laugh. Throughout the Caribbean, my great deeds are celebrated. Oh, yeah? You can't match my witty repartee. I am rubber. You are glue. You're as repulsive as a monkey in a negligee. Oh, yeah? You win! Give me your treasure. You filthy unwashed thing, you. The treasure is yours. We're loaded with booty. Back again, mister? I'd like to buy some cannons for my pirate ship. I'll take the Ouchmaster. The Ouchmaster it is. Mom! You'd best sail away before you get hurt. I'm Guybrush Threepwood, a mighty pirate. Don't make me laugh. You can't match my witty repartee. I could, if you would use some breath spray. Heaven preserve me. You look like something that's died. Uh, can you go cross-eyed? Ah, when your father first saw you, he must have been mortified. Dinoflagellates are the cause of red tide. Give me your treasure, you sea skunk. Well, if I had any, you'd be the first one to get it. Arr. Get off me deck, you sea slug. I'm Guybrush Threepwood, a mighty pirate. Don't make me laugh. Throughout the Caribbean, my great deeds are celebrated. Too bad, they're all fabricated. I'll skewer you like a saw at a buffet. With your breath, I'm sure they all suffocated. Ah, when your father first saw you, he must have been mortified. Too bad they're all fabricated. Ha! I've beaten you. I'll let you live if you give me your treasure. Well, if I had any, you'd be the first one to get it. Arr. Get 
Get off me deck, you sea slug. I'm Guybrush Streepwood, a mighty pirate. Don't make me laugh. I'll skewer you like a sow at a buffet. When I'm done with you, you'll be a boneless filet. I'm guard! Touché! I'd like to see this sword fight on instant replay. Heaven preserve me! You look like something that's died! I can't wait until our tax forms are simplified. Ha! I've beaten you. I'll let you live, if you give me your treasure. Treasure? You wanted treasure? I'm sorry, I'm fresh out. A box on you for boarding me ship. I'm Guybrush Threepwood, a mighty pirate. Don't make me laugh. Heaven preserve me, you look like something that's died. Oh, yeah! Hunger, touche! Oh, that's so cliche. Would you like to be buried or cremated? This isn't going as well as I'd anticipated. You're as repulsive as a monkey in a negligee! I look that much like your fiancé? You can't match my witty repartee. I could, if you would use some breath spray. Give me a treasure. Treasure? You wanted treasure? I'm sorry, I'm fresh out. You'd best sail away before you get hurt. I've come to plunder your treasure. Good luck, boy. Would you like to be buried or cremated? With you around, I'd prefer to be fumigated. Every enemy I've met, I've annihilated. With your breath, I'm sure they all suffocated. Throughout the Caribbean, my great deeds are celebrated. I am rubbing you are glue. You can't match my witty repartee. I am rubbing you are glue. You win! Give me your treasure. The treasure is yours. We're loaded with booty. Back again, mister? I'd like to buy some cannons for my pirate ship. I'll take the Holemaker Deluxe. One Holemaker Deluxe coming right up. Mom! A mighty pirate. Don't make me laugh. Heaven preserve me, you look like something that's died. Oh, yeah? Would you like to be buried or cremated? With you around, I'd prefer to be fumigated. I'll skewer you like a sow at a buffet. When I'm done with you, you'll be a boneless filet. Hunger, touche. Oh, that is so cliche. 
You're as repulsive as a monkey in a negligee. Too bad they're all fabricated. Open your hole so I may take your treasure. Well, if I had any, you'd be the first one to get it. Arr! Who are you? I'm Guybrush Threepwood, a mighty pirate. Don't make me laugh. Heaven preserve me, you look like something that's died. The only way you'll be preserved is in formaldehyde. Killing you would be justifiable homicide. The only way you'll be preserved is in formaldehyde. Every enemy I've met, I've annihilated. With your breath, I'm sure they all suffocated. Throughout the Caribbean, my great deeds are celebrated. Too bad they're all fabricated. Give me your treasure. Treasure? You want a treasure? I'm sorry, I'm fresh out. Get off me deck, you sea slug. I'm Guybrush Threepwood, a mighty pirate. Don't make me laugh. Killing you would be justifiable homicide. I'm shaking, I'm shaking. I'll skewer you like a sow at a buffet. I'm shaking, I'm shaking. You're as repulsive as a monkey in a negligee. I'm shaking, I'm shaking. You win. Give me your treasure. Yeah, grubby bilge swigger. The treasure is yours. We're loaded with booty. Back again, mister? I'd like to buy some cannons for my pirate ship. I'll take the Pain Giver 2000. The Pain Giver 2000 it is. Mom! Treasure or your life. Good luck, boy! Killing you would be justifiable homicide. Then killing you must be justifiable fungicide. When your father first saw you, he must have been mortified. I carry traveler's checks that are accepted worldwide. I'll skewer you like a sow at a buffet. When I'm done with you, you'll be a boneless filet. Would you like to be buried or cremated? I'm shaking, I'm shaking. Every enemy I've met, I've annihilated. With your breath, I'm sure they all suffocated. I fancy ye have treasure. Hand it over. If I had treasure, don't you think I'd spend it before grappling with the likes of you? I, I suppose you would. Never mind then. What be you wanting? I'm Guybrush Threepwood, a mighty pirate. Don't make me laugh. You're as repulsive as a monkey in a negligee. I look that much like your fiance. I have 
never seen such clumsy swordplay. The only way you'll be preserved is in formaldehyde. Killing you would be justifiable homicide. The only way you'll be preserved is in formaldehyde. Ha! Ah, I've beaten you. I let you live if you give me your treasure. I haven't got any treasure. Why do you think I was attacking you? You'd better leave now if you value your life. I'm Guybrush Threepwood, a mighty pirate. Don't make me laugh. I have never seen such clumsy swordplay. You would have, but you are always running away. Killing you would be justifiable homicide. Then killing you must be justifiable fungicide. Heaven preserve me, you look like something that's died. The only way you'll be preserved is in formaldehyde. Would you like to be buried or cremated? With you around, I'd prefer to be fumigated. When your father first saw you, he must have been mortified. At least mine can be identified. Give me your treasure, you sea skunk. Well, if I had any, you'd be the first one to get it. Arr. How dare you attack my ship! I'm Guybrush Threepwood, a mighty pirate. Don't make me laugh. Hunger! Touché! I'm shaking, I'm shaking. You're as repulsive as a monkey in a negligee. Oh, yeah? Every enemy I've met, I've annihilated. Oh, yeah? You win! Give me your treasure. The treasure is yours. We're loaded with booty. Again, mister? I'd like to buy some cannons for my pirate ship. I'll take the Mr. Massacre brand cannon. One Mr. Massacre coming right up. Mom! Streetwood, a mighty pirate. Don't make me laugh. When your father first saw you, he must have been mortified. Oh, yeah? Would you like to be buried or cremated? With you around, I'd prefer to be fumigated. Every enemy I've met. I've annihilated. With your breath, I'm sure they all suffocated. I have never seen such clumsy swordplay. Oh, yeah? You win! Give me your treasure. Yeah, grubby bilge swigger. I didn't want it anyway. It's got that horrible curse. What? Only kidding. We're loaded with booty. Back again, mister? 
I'd like to buy some cannons for my pirate ship. I'll take the Destructomatic T-47. Whoa, mister. You've entered a select group of pirates. Mom! Get off me, dead Jesse Sloan. I don't have any treasure, you know. You wouldn't lie to me, would you? Yes, but I'm not lying now. I'm Guybrush Threepwood, a mighty pirate. Don't make me laugh. Heaven preserve me, you look like something that's died. The only way you'll be preserved is in formaldehyde. I can't rest till you've been exterminated. With you around, I'd prefer to be fumigated. Would you like to be buried or cremated? With you around, I'd prefer to be fumigated. You can't match my witty repartee. Oh, yeah? I have never seen such clumsy swordplay. You would have, but you're always running away. Give me your treasure. I haven't got any treasure. Why do you think I was attacking you? It's the Destructomatic T-47 armor-piercing carnage delivery system with auto-loading and fax modem. Here for another whipping? I've come to settle the score. Your lips look like they belong on the cash of the day. I look that much like your fiance? I give you a choice. You can be gutted or decapitated. With you around, I'd prefer to be fumigated. Nothing can stop me from blowing you away. I could, if you would use some breath spray. Your stench would make an outhouse cleaner irritated. With your breath, I'm sure they all suffocated. Your looks would make pigs nauseated. I'd like the Latin verb to go. Conjugated. Your mother wears a toupee. Oh, that is so cliche. Nothing on this earth can save your sorry hide. The only way you'll be preserved is in formaldehyde. My attacks have left entire islands depopulated. With your breath, I'm sure they all suffocated. Sacre bleu! I cannot believe it! I have been defeated in battle! So give me that map, take your ship and skedaddle. You win, you win, you'll get your map back. You were doomed from the start, you kleptomaniac. All right, all right, I give up already. It's no wonder you lost with a sword so unsteady. Merci, I beg you, no more insults, please. Your smell and face remind me of moldy old cheese. Ah! We got the map back. Now we can sail to Blood Island.
I'm doing all I can here! Agus! Lend a hand! I'm barely holding on myself, mate! Oh, I got this one! She's the devil's own! I guess I blacked out for a second. Where's Elaine? She flew a wee bit into the woods when we crashed. Then let's get going. We'll find her, then scour the island for the uncursed diamond ring that'll transform her back to normal. I don't be thinking we will, lad. What do you mean? Uh, I mean, what do you mean, Haggis? This be a mutiny, Captain. We're leaving you. Did I mention that I'm offering my crew a very attractive pension plan? Ah, uh, you did. And the stock options. But we're still leaving. But why, Haggis? Why? Well, I admit being your pirate crew's been a real pleasure. A real pleasure. But we've grown restless. We can hear the voice of the siren calling to us, and she says she'd be wanting us to do her hair. You're going back to being barbers? Aye. We'll be sailing back to Plunder Island just as soon as we can fix the ship. Good luck, Captain Driftwood. It were a pleasure to be looting with you. I guess I'm on my own again. It's a bottle of soothing hand lotion. You'd best be leaving that. That there hand lotion be for the rough, dry skin that can often accompany ship repair. It's a bottle of Captain Nick's shaving soap with a cork in it. It must have fallen from the barber's supplies when the ship wrecked. I can't pull the cork out with my hands. The label on this mask reads, Product of Luxembourg. I feel a dark presence coming over me. Hi there. Ah! Ah! Please, keep it down. No screaming. Oh, my head. Hi, I'm Guybrush. And you would be? I am Madame Zima, mistress of the ancient arts of precognition and augury, diva of divination. Cool. You're a fortune teller. Ah, that and so much more. Whatever. Tell me my fortune. I do not think you wish to hear. There are things of which a man is better off being ignorant. Oh, but I'm already ignorant of so many things. I want to know my future. No, you are not meant to know. I bet you just can't do it. That's the problem. You can't do it, and you're afraid everyone will find out you're just a phony. You know, I could put a curse on you that would make every morsel of food you eat become a ravenous cockroach inside your intestines, giving you the most excruciating death imaginable. So, are you gonna tell me my fortune or not? I'm not kidding! Okay, okay. Do you know anything about the lost ring of Blood Island? I sense tremendous sorrow in connection with that ring, and a great part missing. A beautiful diamond. Where's the diamond? I see a dark cave filled with evil men, and a place of death. A dark island in the form of a giant skull. What's in the cards for me? Fame? Fortune? Romance? Ah, very well. We will consult the cards. The process of reading the tarot is a very complex one. Each draw of the cards foretells an upcoming event in your life. 
When assembled, they will tell the story of your future. A future filled with twists and... Ah! Good Lord, woman, stop that screaming. What is it? Is that a good... Ah! It is death. Well, in the tarot, death just means change, right? I mean, it's nothing to get worried about, right? Uh, yeah, sure, whatever you say. Now please go! There must be some mistake. Read my tarot cards again. There is no mistaking your fate, Guybrush. The cards do not lie. But if you insist, once again, it is death. I'm feeling luckier. Give me another tarot reading. Luck is not involved here, Guybrush. It is your destiny. Whatever. Let's see what the cards say this time. The card says death. Are you sure you're not dealing from the bottom of the deck? Remember that curse I told you about? Okay, okay. Never mind. Hit me. Death! How many of those cards do you have, anyway? How about giving me one more tarot reading? This is evil work, Guybrush. The fates have conspired against you, and no man can interfere. Your path has been determined. Okay, I get your point. I really do. Just one more time for Guybrush. <gasps> Let me guess. Death? Leave this place. Huh? You are putting us all in grave danger. Your very presence will bring us nothing but sickness, tragedy, and death. Oh, yeah? Well... Demon! Demon! Look! A three-headed monkey! Ah! Then the prophecies were true! Where? I don't see anything. He must have run away. This is a very bad omen. It says, be a grog man. Drink grog. Hi, I'm Guybrush Threepwood, and I'm... Stop yelling. I wasn't yelling, I was just... Oh, I've got a terrible hangover. Find something to clear my head, and I can talk to you. And keep it down. What was that I... Just get me the ingredients for a hangover remedy and I'll talk to you. It's a picture of a really goofy looking pirate wannabe. Oh, wait. The Good Soup Family Crypt.
It's a smelly old dog. It says Old Blind Pew. Okay, fella, this won't hurt a bit. Hey, I guess it didn't hurt a bit. You must be shedding. It's locked. Lost Welshman Ferry Line. Haunted sea cruises and whale watching excursions daily. It's a rocky part of the beach. I can't reach it. I can't shake it hard enough with just my hands. I found this egg for your hangover remedy. Shh. Thanks. This is some of the hair of the dog that bit me. Shh. Thanks. Here's a wild pepper for your hangover remedy. Shh. Thanks. That's all the ingredients I need. Let me quietly mix up a dose. You can take the rest. I'd like a drink, please. Sure. What will you have? I'd like something subtle with a hint of oak. Right. Ah, Papa Pichu. Here's your glass back. I'd like a drink, please. Sure. What will you have? <laughs> Give me something to put hair on my chest. Got just the thing for you. It's not just refreshing. It's also a renewable alternative fuel source. Coming right up. Ah, 
I'm a Pichu. Here's your glass back. I'd like a drink, please. Sure. What will you have? Give me a big fruity drink with an umbrella in it. Good choice. It's a delicious taste of the islands. Made with lemon, grapefruit, and ground beef. Hey, don't I get one of those decorative umbrellas to go in my tropical drink? Um, I don't think we have any. No, I'm wrong. I do have this one. Ah, Papa Pichu, here's your glass back. I'd like a drink, please. Right. That opened it. That makes the drink oh so much more appealing. It just occurred to me that mixing medicine and alcohol is a really stupid and possibly lethal thing to do. If I were a real person instead of a lovably inept cartoon character with the potential for a few more sequels, I wouldn't even consider it. Skull! That's odd. It's supposed to cause drowsiness. I don't feel the least bit drowsy. In fact, I, uh... In fact, I feel, uh... <laughs> So then the Undertaker says, I wanted to be a pallbearer, but I couldn't stop coughing. Oh, 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 you crack me up, Mort. So what's with the new guy? Oh, he's been like that for an hour now. Passed out cold. He'll come around. I don't know. I'm pretty sure he's dead. Hmm. I guess that's the end of the game, then. What with him being the main character and all? Funny. I didn't think you could die in LucasArts Adventure Games. Well, maybe they're trying something different. When I should take care of him? Would you? It's bad for business, having him just lie there. Rest in peace and all that. Really dead? Oh, come on, cut it out. It won't open. I'm trapped. Yikes. Where's that telltale pounding coming from? It's coming from within one of these coffins. From the dead. The dead that surround me. They must know my horrible secret. They'll never let me rest until I've paid for the wrongs I've committed against. Wait a second. I don't have a horrible secret. locked. I can't open it. I'm glad to be finally out of that thing, even though it was a spacious, comfortable model with plenty of leg and headroom. Well, hello there. Say, you look familiar. Uh, yes, well... Uh... Of course, Guybrush Threepwood. You're the one who locked me in there in the first place. Well, you see, I've been meaning to... 
No, no, I won't hear of it. That was the best time of my life. Gave me plenty of time to think, you know? To think about the things that really matter. I don't know if you've considered this, son, but live burials are not an altogether uncommon experience here in the Caribbean. I wasn't aware of that. Not to mention pirate raids and deadly sea battles, huge man-eating reptiles, dangerous quicksand pits, trigger-happy do lists, and of course, those pesky undead. Have you ever thought of what would happen to your loved ones should this gruesome fate befall you? No, but... but... Well, of course, you have plenty of time to think about it. Or do you? I'm one of the lucky ones. I've been dead. It's given me a whole new perspective on life. A life that I'm going to devote to making sure people's life insurance needs are met. Here, take one of my business cards I've had made up. If you've been locked in that coffin, how are you able to have business cards made? Now's not the time to worry about the technicalities, son. Now's the time to ask yourself, are you covered? Run along now and let me set up my office. Mm -hmm. We're trapped in here. The door's locked. Nonsense! This is one of Stan's cozy crypts, all equipped with a patented secure lock release mechanism. Just jiggle the handle there. Hi, guys. I guess you'll be wondering how I came to be back from the dead. No questions for the dead guy come back to life? No questions like, is there life after death or is there a heaven? Will there be adequate parking? Fine, be that way. I wouldn't tell you about the hereafter if you begged me. I don't believe we've met. Who are you? I am Griswold, last of the good soups and proprietor of this hotel. You may have heard of us and our soup restaurant resort empire that stretches across the Caribbean. Well... Oh, this was once our proudest resort. In recent years, however, hard times have befallen the family good soup and left me alone in this rotting hotel. The good soup plantation resort hotel and casino what do you know about the Lost Ring of Blood Island? Oh, that's a very sad chapter in my family's history. My great-aunt Minnie Stroni Goodsoup was a well-to-do member of Blood Island society. Her one weakness was her romantic nature. She had a thing for pirates, one in particular. He came into port, she fell instantly in love, and they were engaged within the week. Then, on the eve of their wedding, he stole the fantastic Good Soup diamond from her ring and sold it to smugglers on Skull Island. She wore the empty engagement band on her finger until the day she died, which was not long after. Some say she still haunts the Good Soup family tomb. It is a sad story, is it not? Hmm? Oh, I'm sorry, I wasn't listening. Uh, could you repeat that? Get lost, Chowderhead! I thought if I died, I'd be buried with your aunt. Well, isn't it obvious? You can't be buried in the Good Soup family crypt unless you're a member of the Good Soup family. A member of the family, eh? Huh? How can I get out to Skull Island? Well, there used to be a regular ferry out to Skull Island. Used to? Oh, one cold night, so the tale goes, the Welshman set out in his dinghy. The deep fog around Skull Isle obscured even the moon, but the Welshman could see the distant light of the Blood Island lighthouse. When he'd rode half the distance, the light in the lighthouse was mysteriously smashed, and the poor Welshman was lost, almost never to be seen again. Uh, almost? Well, there are those who say that late at night, if you stare into the fog long enough, you may see the flying Welshman rowing in his ghostly dinghy, lost for all eternity. Creepy. How's business? Oh, I need another drink. Not good, I take it. Just look around. No guests, no food, no entertainment. Not even the cannibals will come here. My only regular is a spooky old fortune teller who gives everyone the creeps. Uh, no offense, Fedden Ziva. A pax on your firstborn! Hmm, yes. 
was right. Eh, that's a shame. Sorry I brought it up. I'm off to explore the rustic charms of Blood Island. Baron C. Lambert Chowder Good Soup, pioneer of crouton technology. He looks a lot like the guy at the bar. It's a bunch of old portraits of the Van Salad family, and I thought the Good Soups were a homely bunch. I can't pull it in. I'd better get rid of this incriminating picture frame. What? This is one ugly picture. Looks just like the bartender. There, I've cut out the face. It's a good soup family portrait, but I've cut out the face. Oh, there's nothing like family. No matter what may happen in the topsy-turvy world of the Caribbean resort business, I can always relax in the knowledge that I come from good, wealthy stock. Breeding. That's what's important. Breeding and culture. Just like Grandfather Lambert. Breeding, culture, and lots and lots of really old money. Mm. It makes a man proud. It's funny. I don't remember Grandfather Lambert as looking so... so common. Oh, weird. It's like his eyes follow me. Pictures like that really creep me out. You've convinced me. I want to buy some insurance. A wise choice, and one you won't soon regret. The question isn't whether or not you can afford to buy an insurance policy, it's whether you can afford not to. Speaking of which, can you afford to buy an insurance policy? Well, how much does it cost? Oh, that depends on a variety of factors. How much coverage you need, how much you're willing to spend, all sorts of highly complicated sliding scale insurance equations and such. But I won't bore you with all that. Just let me ask you this. How much money do you have? Well, I've got these wooden nickels. I see. Maybe I've confused you somewhere along the line. While nothing would please me more to send you out of here, with the peace of mind that your family will be provided for in the unlikely event of your death, I have to run a business here. If you can't at least show me some collateral, I can't give you a policy. This authentic pirate relic. A genuine tooth from an actual pirate. Only one of its kind. Is that real gold? The finest known to man. Not much spit on it either anymore. 
Now you're starting to speak my language. All right, let's find a coverage plan that suits your needs. And you can rest assured that you've provided for your family well after your unfortunate departure. What are the terms of this plan exactly? It's quite simple, son. When you die, whoever holds that policy gets a lot of money. A lot of money? Wow. Wow is right. Now I want you to be careful out there. Okay, I will. Thanks. No, I'm serious. I want you to be very, very careful. Will do. It's locked. I guess I'm better at this pirating thing than I thought. It worked! It's so musty that I don't want to open it up. I'll bet his room charges are pretty hefty by now. I can't reach it. One nail will never be enough to hold down this bed. I'm not sure if that's strong enough to hold it. I might need one more nail. There. The bed has been nailed down. That ought to do it. The Good Soups. A Life in Pictures by M.M. Good Soup. It's full of all the dates and fun facts you'd ever want to know about the Good Soup family. And it says I'll receive a new book every month, or cancel with no obligation, and keep my copy of Buccaneers and Bouillabaisse Bays as a free gift. It looks out over the cemetery. Creepy. Uncle Griswold, it's me! Don't you recognize me? Recognize you? I've never seen you before in my life. What is your name? Vegetable. Vegetable? I'm from California. Hmm. I don't recall having any relatives with that name. Look at me. Don't I look just like a good soup? Now that you mention it, you do bear a slight resemblance to my great-grandfather, C. Lambert Good Soup. Clammy? Why, folks back home used to tell me all the time. You're the spitting image of old chowder good soup. You know, I think you're right. Ah, uh, I wonder why I didn't see it before. I'd like a drink, please. Coming right up. This guy's dead again? Yeah, he's just faking it. No, I'm pretty sure it's the real thing this time. Well, if you say so. He's an awfully fragile little fella, isn't he? I'll take care of him. Well, hello. What a surprise you're dropping in like this. Now you see, this is exactly what I was talking about. I already have a nice skeleton arm, thank you.
I'm cashing in this insurance policy. Give me a lot of money. But this is a life insurance policy. You collect when the policyholder dies. No, honest. I was dead for a really long time. And you just got better? Well, yes. Do you have any proof of this miracle? As a matter of fact, smart guy, no. Then it appears that you're just wasting my time. Run along and play now. I'm trying to run a business here. I could just talk about Good Soup history all day. How about that first fateful journey made to the Caribbean? Oh, you mean the one that... Baron Salmon Bisque de Good Soup began in 1621? Exactly. He landed on Scab Island with just a spoon and a dream. In just four short years, he had formed the largest chain of all soup restaurants in the Western Hemisphere. By 1635, he had driven the entire Van Salad family out of the Caribbean and had a restaurant empire that spanned the globe. Actually, the Van Salads were not driven out until 1637, and the Good Soup chain of restaurants and resorts never did become popular in the South Pacific. Yes, we are. All right, whatever. Well, son, it looks like you were right. Welcome back to the glorious name of Good Soup. I'm, uh, honored. And as a Good Soup, you're welcome to every benefit the name provides. Instant prestige around Blood Island. A 10% discount at any of the Good Soup resorts in the Caribbean. And, of course, medical, dental, and a 401k. And the best thing of all, if you should happen to drop dead, you will be buried in the extravagant Good Soup family crypt. It's as if all my dreams have come true. I'd like a drink, please. Here you go, lady. had a sudden and completely unexpected relapse of death. Oh, and just as we were getting reacquainted, as his kinsman, it is my duty to give him a proper burial. It is my solemn vow. My dear vegetable good soup shall be buried in the good soup family crypt. All right. There's a hole in the ceiling of this crypt. I think I might be able to squeeze through. Wow, it's a tunnel that opens on a deep, dark forest. It looks familiar somehow, as if I've seen it in a dream. Or maybe it's, well, I don't know. Great jumping monkeys! A terrifying horde of stunningly rendered rabbit jaguars. They're coming right at me! Whew, it's a good thing I couldn't get through that hole. I'd be done for. It's a memorial plaque for Mini Stroni Good Soup. Yikes. <clears throat> oh, hello there. Who are you and what are you doing here? I am Mini Good Soup, last in a long line of eligible Good Soup debutantes. I was buried here exactly one week after my wedding day. A wedding day that never came. What happened? I was the belle of Blood Island. How many people can claim that? 
Oh, how the lads adored me. I was courted by the richest, most handsome men in the Caribbean. But all my suitors bored me to tears. I wanted someone dangerous. I wanted a pirate. By the way, what do you do for a living? Flooring inspector. Oh. Then one day, a real pirate sailed his ship into the bay. I fell for him instantly, and we became engaged. But he left me standing at the altar, and I died of a broken heart. Wow. That bites. Oh, I know. Were there any other suitors you found attractive? Well, <laughs> there was one I could have fallen for. Young Charles de Goulash. He had such a radiant smile. What happened to him? You know, it's funny. I don't know. He checked into the hotel one night and I never saw him again. Go into the light. If only it were that easy. I'm afraid I can never leave this crypt until I marry. Are you attached? <laughs> Engaged, actually. <laughs> oh, what a shame. You sure have pretty eyes. Oh. Hey, nice ring. <laughs> Was it something I said? I hate this ring. It's been passed down from mother to daughter in the Good Soup family for generations. It was to be my wedding ring until that evil pirate stole the diamond and left me. Left me here to die of a broken heart. How do I get out of this crypt? There's no way out of this crypt for either of us. I must haunt this lonely tomb until I've married a man I truly love. And you can't leave because the door is locked. This is just a shade too creepy for me. I'm leaving. <laughs> Good soup is food. This is going to be so cool. I don't want to get my fingerprints all over it. <laughs> Die! Oh, I'm not going to do that again. I think I broke my skull. I'm all skull. It's your own fault. Stop scaring me like that. So I did scare you? Really? Well, startled is more like it. Oh. B but startled in a terrified kind of way. You really are very, very scary. Don't talk down to me. I really don't have any choice. I saw you get out of that crypt. Does this mean that you're dead? No, I was only faking. Darn. I thought together we could walk among the living and spawn a new wave of terror throughout the Caribbean. So what you're saying is that you only love me for my legs. Something like that. Hey. That must be the grave digger. It's a glowing lantern. I can't reach. I've got it. Hey, what happened to the light? Do your stuff. Okay. Move! Ah! Mortal fool! Release me from this wretched tomb! I must be set free, or I will haunt you forever! I will hide your keys beneath the cushions of your upholstered furniture! 
and never more will you be able to find socks that match. All right, hang on. I'm coming. Great work, Murray. I... I was terrifying, wasn't I? My demonic powers have made me omnipotent! <laughs> Uh-oh. Looks like the lantern ran out of oil. There. It's open. Now shuffle off and give me peace. Well, Murray, are you ready to continue our heady adventuring? Murray? Where'd he go? Hi, guys. I've risen from the deepest recesses of the underworld. Your curiosity is overwhelming. Extended family size processed cheese food spread. I think this is the stuff they use to make nachos. for my tips. Put it back. But I was going to put a whole lot of money in it. Too much for me to carry around with me. So I'm going to have to take it with me and fill it up. Oh, okay then. So long. Oh, Charles, it has. It has. You look so different. Really? Why, you look exactly the same. Oh, Charles, how you flatter me. Oh, but you must go now. But why? Now that I've found you again after all these years. What would our families say if they knew we were alone together on such a romantic night? Minnie, this may sound rash, but I... I love you, Minnie Good Soup. Oh, Charles, you mustn't. Oh, I can't help it. I've always loved you. Do you hear? I've always loved you, Minnie, and I always will. Come away with me now. Hello? Oh, but Charles, it just isn't done. Think of the scandal it would cause. To heck with the scandal, Minnie. Oh. Marry me! Oh, yes, Charles. Yes. A thousand times, yes! Then kiss me, my love. Looks like it's just about Elaine's size. 
but it needs a diamond to be complete. Have you found her, you cadaverous canine? Yeah, yeah, uh, nope. Nope. She's not on Plunder Island, Captain LeChuck. <laughs> then scour the seas, you ossified rats! Hunt them down, then bring them to me. Find me Guy Rush Threepwood. It's with him that you'll find Elaine. Burn down every island in the Caribbean if you have to. But bring me my bride! And more slaws! Curse them! Never give you enough slaw with these value meals. Welcome back to Mutual of Stan. I'm cashing in this insurance policy. But this is a life insurance policy. You collect when the policyholder dies. I'm dead. I really am. Do you have any proof that you're dead? As a matter of fact, smart guy, I've got your proof right here. A death certificate. Well, this must be some kind of mistake. Uh-uh, it's right there in high-res black and white. I die. Give me a lot of money. Hmm, it looks like I'm left with no choice but to acquiesce. No, just give me my money. That's what I mean. Oh, thanks. This village is deserted. How curious. It's a large cube of tofu. I'm Guybrush Threepwood, a mighty pirate. A pirate, huh? Well, then you must realize the inherent danger in wandering into a village populated by cannibals. Cannibals? You say that like it's a bad thing. Well, it's true. But we are no longer vicious and bloodthirsty cannibals. No? No. We underwent a paradigm shift in our belief system several years ago. Really? That's fascinating. We decided we wanted to live a healthy cannibal lifestyle, completely cut back on our fatty missionary intake, and went vegetarian altogether. But there certainly was a time I would have eaten you. Young guy like you, not too much muscle. Hey! I'd probably marinate you in white wine for 45 minutes, dip you in a light corn batter, wrap you in banana leaves, and bury you in a pit with a hundred hot coals, let you roast overnight. Then I'd serve you on a bed of basmati rice, with a garnish of shiitake mushrooms and shallots. <laughs> but not anymore, right? <laughs> but, but not anymore, right? Huh? Oh, yeah, right, right. Aren't you afraid the volcano will destroy your village? The volcano? Oh, no. Mount Acidophilus is completely harmless. We have curried favor with Sherman, the all-powerful god of the volcano. The god of the volcano likes spicy foods? Shut up, or I'll eat you. Okay. 
When we first landed on this island, the volcano god was most upset, belching out smoke, vomiting up lava. It was disgusting, really, and potentially hazardous. We knew we had to do something to pacify the volcano god, and we assumed a good sacrifice would do the trick. A reasonable assumption. But when we threw the sacrifice into the volcano, Mount Acidophilus erupted violently. We thought Sherman was upset at us, so we started making sacrifices every day. We tried everything. Fish, poultry, livestock, phenylalanine. The usual. Then one day, we tried Bree. There was a huge eruption that nearly killed us all. What happened? Sherman is lactose intolerant. Ah, uh, it all makes sense now. Now, Sherman is on a very strict diet. He only gets fresh fruit, vegetables, and of course, soy products for the protein so important to muscle building. You look familiar somehow. Perhaps it's because I look like a big lemon. Oh yeah, but it's more than that. We've met before, back on Monkey Island. Ah, uh, Monkey Island. We had a nice village there. Rent-controlled huts close to the good schools. Those were the salad days, so to speak. Till they put in that darned carnival. Carnival? Yes, carnival. Just as soon as they put up the first tent, whoosh! The whole place becomes trendy. Sailors coming in at all times of the night. That awful music droning on and on. And to be honest with you, I think the Midway games are rigged. Yeah, yeah. At night, it wasn't safe for a cannibal to walk the island alone. Stand aside. I mean to visit the volcano. I'm afraid I cannot allow that. Our ritual offering is about to begin. Terrific. I'm fascinated by your quaint tribal customs. Postcards and slides are available in the lobby. Non-cannibals are forbidden from witnessing the actual ceremony. That's so unfair. Tell it to the volcano gods. I don't make the rules, you know. When does the ceremony begin? It was supposed to have started half an hour ago. Even now, members of my village are preparing a human-like sacrifice for the volcano god. Human-like? Due to the delicate nature of the volcano god's digestion, we can't actually feed him real humans. So we sacrifice a human substitute. It doesn't really taste like a human, but it has a similar texture. So what's the holdup? We're still waiting for our featured guest. I really want to see the volcano. You're just not a cannibal and your presence would defile the sanctity of our ceremony. Oh, can't you make an exception just this once? It's an emergency. I'd like to, but if I let you in, then I'd have to let everybody in. Next thing you know, cannibalism is in, and they're making documentaries about us. Who's your featured guest? He's an ambassador from one of the other islands. It's all part of a new cannibal outreach program between the villages. Apparently not all villages are as punctual as ours. Uh, I'll help you find him. What does he look like? I don't know. He should be dressed for the ceremony. And he'd better be a vegetarian. We specifically asked for a vegetarian. I bring a gift for the volcano god. Oh, we can't take gifts from outsiders. Government regulations, health codes, taboos, that sort of thing. I'll send him your regards, though. Gotta run. Bye. That looks like a mask. I'll just walk over here so he won't see me put this on. Ick. <clears throat> Finally, you're here. Come on, we're late for the sacrifice. God of the volcano who resides in Mount Acidopolis! Accept this sacrifice we make unto you. In the form of flesh with high amounts of fiber and wholesome cellulose. Free of all fat and trans fatty acids. So that it might nourish you and bring your favor upon our humble village and not upset nor agitate your ulcerative caldera. Okay, boys, toss him in. You've been a wonderful audience. Thank you, and good night. Bubbly.
You fool! You've given cheese to a lactose intolerant volcano god. Do you know what that means? You brought about the coming of the divine dysentery. Run for your lives! <laughs> Wow, that was more spectacular than I'd hoped. Feel the power of the ancient volcano goddess in Griswold Good Soup presents High Explosive, the most intense showgirl cabaret in the Caribbean. Starring Wilhelmina, temptress of the caldera, nightly at seven. It's a big, heavy looking cast iron cooking pot. I'm not gonna carry around that heavy iron pot for no reason. Uh, Haggis? Aye. How are the repairs coming? Well, lad, things could be worse. There's plenty of lumber on this island, so we'll be able to repair all the major holes in the hull. We'll also be adding a hardwood dance floor on the Lido deck. Nice. Hey, it's something we've been talking about for a while. My, that's a big bottle of lotion you have there. That's right, she be. And don't need be getting any ideas about stealing it. We are sure to be needing it, you see. Carpentry on this tropical climate can and will prematurely age your skin. Tis but one of the many hardships a pirate must face daily during this barbarous age. Aye. And if we pirates didn't carry hand lotion aboard all our ships, we'd probably die from the chafing. <laughs> wow, if I were doing a history report on pirates and I included that fact, I'd get an A+. We're talking guaranteed A+. And that A-plus just might get you into the college of your choice. Think about it. There's no way that I can have even a drop of lotion? Well, maybe we could make a deal. You see, we need to be repairing the ship. She's leaky as a colander. And for some unknown reason, the ship's supplies of tar have been depleted. How the previous crew could set sail without any tar aboard eludes me. But the fact is, Unless we get us some tar or something like it, we're doomed to this island for good. Hey, I'd give you the whole blooming bottle of lotion if you could find me something to patch the ship so we can be on our way home. I'll let you get back to work. I guess I'll just drag this down to Haggis now. Here, Haggis. This stuff should work to patch up the ship. Aye, laddie, indeed it should. The consistency of tar, but with a tangy pepper taste. So, can I have your lotion now? Aye, lad, go ahead and take it. Elaine looks like she's all right. Hang on, honey. I'm going to get you out of this mess. That ring is really stuck on her finger. Let's see if this slippery, greasy lotion does the trick. That should do it. The 
cursed ring exploded. I don't think she can hear me. They sure are bright. They're too small and fast for me to catch with my hands. There's a barrel at the top of the window. I can't reach it. sugar water now. It's full of yummy, delicious sugar water. Mmm, bet that water sure tastes good. There, I poked holes in it. They're trapped inside and glowing like mad. It's full of glowing fireflies. It's an empty mirror frame. I can't pick that up. Here, did you just take my mirror? Nope. You're lying, aren't you? Yes. Put it back. All right, all right. Sheesh, what a grouch. What was that? Nothing. The volcano has erupted! Yes, I know. The good soup empire is saved. Ah, oh, this is the happiest day of my life. Next to the day Grandpa invented the steak crispy and soup oyster cracker. Well, I'm happy for you. Soon the resort will be flooded with tourists coming to see the volcano. And I can finally put on the show I was working on the last time we had guests. What show is that? Voulez-vous Vichyssoise? A dramatic musical about a talented young Parisian soup chef who is cruelly taken down by the Paris culinary establishment for her revolutionary ideas about soup preparation. I'm sure it'll be a big hit. How can I get out to Skull Island? Well, there used to be a regular ferry out to Skull Island, but he was lost to sea when the lighthouse broke. He never was a very strong navigator. I'd like a drink, please. Right. Not again. I just can't afford any more of these funerals. 
Maybe I won't rent the whole orchestra this time. up here. It concentrates the light into a beacon for wayward vessels. Makes a man proud. This is where the lighthouse light would go, if it had one. With all these broken windows, it's no wonder the light blew out. Perfect! The lighthouse is working now. Who are you? Welshman. Ooh. I am the ferryman between here and Skull Island. Trapped for so very long in the icy ocean mists. Oh, how I hate that blasted mist. Really? I like mist. I think it's pretty. Well, sure, mist is pretty. But egad, is it dull. I'd like a ride out to Skull Island, please. I will risk these rough waters no more. For too long have I rocked that watery cradle of death. Freaky imagery. Whatever. Anyway, I'm not going out there again until I'm sure I can make it there safely. I need a compass. How will being able to draw perfect circles get you out to Skull Island? Not that kind of compass. The directional kind. If you find me one, I'll take you to Skull Island. It's volume C and it's mostly digested. I can only make out page 243. A compass is a magnetized bit of metal floating in a solution. What a completely random piece of trivia. Cool, a magnetic pin. The mind boggles at the possibilities. It's full of seawater. Okay. Hey, neat, it points north. Science is fun when you know the secret. Here, take this compass. This is a compass? Will it work? Of course. See how it points north? Wow, that's incredible. How'd you do that? Eh, it was nothing. I'd like a ride out to Skull Island, please. All right, let's go. Bravest of men must dread the horror of this place. Steal your courage, boy, now, before you gaze upon the terrible, horrible face of Skull Island. That's a duck. What are you talking about? Don't you see the skull? This island doesn't look like a skull at all. It looks like a great, big, enormous duck. It should be called Duck Island. Well, you see, you, you gotta squint and sort of turn your head and... Ooh, it's just so scary. If you squint and turn your head, it looks like a bunny. 
Well, anyway, see that light up there on the cliff face? That's Smuggler's Cave. It's run by King Andre, the greatest smuggler in the world. And his nefarious assistant, Cruff. But how do I get up there? You'll have to go to the top of the cliff. Won't you be coming with me? No, you must go alone. There will be someone there who will help you. But I warn you, beware of King Andre. He is as ruthless as he is bald. Good luck. Thanks. Hello. Can you tell me how to find the evil smugglers of Skull Island? Beats me. Oh, wait a second. Uh, I, I think I remember something about that at the orientation seminar. Let me think. The cave is halfway down this sheer cliff face. Climb on board this dumbwaiter. I'll, I'll lower you down. It looks pretty rickety. Are you sure it's safe? No. Never used it before, but uh, I'm sure it can't be that dangerous. I'm a temp here. The, the usual elevator operator, uh, Ronbeard, uh, he's sick, so I'm filling in. Uh, I guess that'll be okay. What's your name? It's LaFoot. Would you lower me down to the smuggler's cave? Sure, sure, I can do that. You, you must weigh no more than, say, 20 pounds, right? Actually, more like 120. Oh. Well, it can't hurt to try, right? No, you're sure about this. Oh, yeah. You don't look that heavy at all. Hmm. Is that not tied securely? Here we go. Okay, give me a little bit more slack. Whoops! Okay, that's too much slack. Ah! Stand aside or I'll strike you down. Uh, I'll strike you down with how polite and reasonable I can be. We seem to have an unwanted visitor, Gruff. Deal with him. Darn. Let me try that again. So, uh, where's this huge diamond you guys are supposed to have? Have at him, Croft. Darn. Let me try that again. Good afternoon. I'm the new Skull Island Diamond Inspector. I'm going to have to see every diamond you've got. Every last one. Come on, people. Chop, chop. I don't have all day. I do not like this man. Kill him. Darn. Let me try that again. I have got so much money, it's almost embarrassing. Well, hello. Let's talk, Mr. Uh... Good soup. Wonton good soup. Very well, Mr. Threepwood. Hey, how did you know my... It is my business to know who enters and leaves Skull Island. I am King Andre, and this is my associate, Gruff. Were you looking for something in particular? The Good Soup Family Diamond. LeChuck stole it, you bought it, I want it. Now. <sighs> Please? Sir? But we have so much quality merchandise here at the Pirates Club. Our prices get lower every day. Everything a pirate, or pirate in trading, could possibly want is here. For the right price. <laughs> You're evading the whole diamond issue. The Good Soup Diamond is the centerpiece of my collection. The fantastic energy flowing through it is the key to all my power. So, can I have it? Of course you can't have it. Unless you were to give me something in return. Maybe we could make a deal. As you wish. You are a formidable opponent, Mr. Threepwood. But it looks as if our game of cat and mouse must cease. It is a perfect diamond. One of the largest I've ever seen. I'll take it. And so it comes with a very large price. Eh, enough with the hard sell. How much? It will cost you an awful lot of money. Do you have that much? Well, I have a lot of money. <laughs> Not enough. My partner is right. We can't give it to you for anything less than an awful lot of money. But perhaps we can make a deal. My partner and I are very fond of cards. Uh, poker, in particular. How about a little wager? If you can defeat us at poker, you win the diamond. Sounds fair. 
Yes, fair. <laughs> Could you stop laughing like that? It's very unnerving. So, Mr. Threepwood, the question is to you. Care to join us in a game of cards? Sounds fun. Deal me in, Baldy. You will have to pay to enter the game. Well, how much do I need? Not very much. Sure, I can handle that. This is a lot of money. I better only give them part of it. Have you ever played poker before, Mr. Threeport? No. Would you believe this is my very first time? <laughs> then I'll give you a brief explanation. The game is the simplest variety of five-card start. I deal five cards to each of us. We show our cards to each other, and the player with the best hand wins. Well, how do I know what makes the best hand? If you have any questions, just ask us. You do trust us, don't you? Of course I trust you. Very well. Let us begin. Good cards. Daddy needs to lift the pirate curse. Take a moment to look at your cards. Two of spades, three of hearts, four of clubs, eight of clubs, and uh, king of diamonds. What a terrible hand. Five of a kind. Right there. Not even you guys can beat five of a kind. You're correct, Mr. Threepwood. We cannot beat five of a kind. The question remains, however, whether or not you can beat a pair. A pair? A pair of murderous smugglers. Huh? Us, Mr. Threepwood. I am talking about us. We're gonna kill you. Oh, I get it. <laughs> whether or not you can beat a pair, that's pretty clever. Now, now, gentlemen, let's not be too hasty. <laughs> There's a delivery man out here with a package. You idiot! You blew out the lights! I got the diamond. Not for long, you little... Bert! Hit him, not me, you cretin! Who are you calling a fool for? There he goes! Get him! Got what I needed from the smugglers. Good. Let us leave this place of evil. Good luck on the rest of your adventures, Guybrush. What? You can't mean... I'm afraid so. This work is too dangerous for me. I'm going to find a more stable, secure line of work. I hear there's still an opening for a chef on Scab Island. Well, you'll be sorely missed. I know, but my destiny lies out there, somewhere. Beyond the rolling waves. Farewell, good friend Welshman. Oh, wait. Where'd you say Scab Island was again? East by Northeast. You can't miss it. Oh, thanks a bunch. Ah, whoops. I forgot to tell him that a magnetized pin will only have compass-like properties for a short time. diamond engagement ring. Elaine, are you all right? Guybrush? Where? Where 
Where are we? You're okay. We're on Blood Island. LeChuck's ring had a terrible curse on it, but I put everything right. You're safe and everything's gonna be fine. Just fine. That be well spoken, pet. But save your breath, lass. You'll be needing it for when you scream. I do. Where, where are we? Don't you be remembering this place, Freebwood. Twas not long ago that I trapped you here to suffer tortures most foul. Wait, I can remember. I've seen this place before in some terrible nightmare. Twas no mere nightmare, Guybrush. Search your feelings. You know it to be true. Oh, no. It can't be. But it is. This is the Carnival of the Damned. Aye, the Carnival of the Damned. You fiend, why have you brought us here? There be two reasons, you pathetic privateer. I be intending to torture and kill ye. And I'll be given Elaine a treasure. Ah, you're wasting your time, LeChuck. Elaine's love can't be bought. Ah, but this be a very special treasure. This be the fabled treasure of Big Whoop. Big Whoop? Aye, the very pirate treasure you were searching for before I caught up with you. What's so special about the treasure of Big Whoop? Isn't it just like any other pirate treasure? I see. Ye do not yet know the dreadful power that be Big Whoop. I guess not. Quake in fear, Threepwood, when I tell thee that Big Whoop be a damned portal to a demon netherworld. Okay. The treasures of Big Whoop be the very gates of hell themselves! Yipe. But how will Big Whoop make Elaine love you? Elaine shall pass through the hoary gates of Big Whoop just as I once did, down to the inky blackness of the infernal nether regions. For you see, Big Whoop gives those who pass through it the greatest gift of all, immortality. But at what cost? Cost? <laughs> Granted, people may find me a bit unapproachable now, and the smell does take a while to get used to. But it'd be worth everything now that I have the power to make Elaine love me. But if you kill Elaine, won't she hate you even more? Aye, at first. But soon she'll be understanding what a grand gift eternal life be. And besides, the dating pool will be surprisingly small when you're the living dead. She'll just have to give me another chance. This whole amusement park, why? The Big Whoop Carnival was my most brilliant idea. Once I had the power of Big Whoop at my command, I could make Elaine mine at last. I see. But again, why an amusement park? I'll be getting to that. I knew Elaine would need a little coaxing, and that I'd be needing an army. A horrible army of the undead. Okay, but why an amusement park? Are you going to let me finish? I'm not talking just to hear myself talk, you know. You're right. I've been rude. Please, go on. Everyone knows that the life of a seaman is a long, hard, lonely one. Sailors spend months longing for just a few days' leave. And you know what they're looking for as soon as they get into port. Why, um... A family-oriented fun park! Oh, that. <laughs> of course. They come to take a ride on the giant roller coaster, the Great Monkey Mountain. They reach the top of the highest peak, and then hands in the air, screaming like monkeys. They plunge down the slope into a great stream of lava. That doesn't sound the least bit fun. Aye, it's not. In fact, it's downright unpleasant. But when they reach the other side, they're fitting warriors for my skeletal army of the damned. How did you find Big Whoop? 
That'd be a long story. Are you sure you want to hear it? Does the torture start after we're done talking here? Aye. Well, go on, then. Back when I were alive, Elaine despised me. No. No, 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 it's true. I can see that now. She didn't like me at all. But I were determined to prove me worth to her, you see. So, I set sail to find the legendary secret of Monkey Island. What is the secret of Monkey Island? The secret of Monkey Island. I could tell you, but I'd rather make you guess. That a sequel can never be as good as the original? Lies! Filthy, dirty lies! No, it goes much deeper than that. It's an ancient secret, closely guarded uh, by the natives and uh, pirates who happen to... You don't even know the secret of Monkey Island, do you? No, not really. All right, then. Let's get on with your story. A few days after setting sail, my ship was caught in a terrible typhoon and was torn apart. I would have drowned, but some friendly sharks found me and set me ashore on Blood Island. There I was, marooned, with no hope of winning Elaine's heart. I thought me luck had run out, but one day a ship made port at Blood Island. Twas the ship of one Captain Marley, Elaine's own grandfather. I struck up a conversation with Rum Rogers Sr., first mate on the ship. And for the price of a few drinks, I learned that they had the map to the legendary treasure of Big Whoop. Although I had no ship and no money. Hold on. Can I sit down? Both my legs are going to sleep. Although I had no ship and no money, I planned to beat Marley's crew to the treasure and take it for myself. I didn't have the money to buy a new ship, but I still had my greatest asset. The ability to kill bugs just by breathing? But I still had my greatest asset. That uh, indefinable LeChuck charm. One of the rich young debutantes on Blood Island was helpless against it. After a week with me, she would have followed me to the grave. Unfortunately for her, she didn't get the chance. I pried the diamond from her family's engagement ring and sold it to some cutthroat smugglers for the cost of a new ship. You big old bedwetting duty head. Hm, I've been called worse. With me new ship, I easily overtook Marley's crew and beat them to Big Whoop, which just so happened to be here on Monkey Island. What happened to Captain Marley and his crew? Their ship arrived at Monkey Island a half hour after mine. But they were too late to stop me from claiming me prize. And they watched me pass through the portal of Big Whoop. Craven cowards that they were, the power of what they saw overwhelmed them. They fled the island in terror. Marley tore his treasure map into four pieces and gathered his crew around him. There was Rum Rogers Sr., the first mate, Rap Scallion, the cook, and young Lindy, the cabin boy. Marley gave each a piece of the map, keeping one for himself. They promised to guard those map pieces with their lives. I saw to it that they kept their promise. They were the only people alive to know about Big Whoop. What happened to Rapt Scallion, the cook? Rapt Scallion died in a flash fire in his weenie hut on Scab Island. That's right. I brought him back to life with a voodoo spell. I remember it so vividly. Guybrush. Guybrush. Oh, I'm sorry, I was miles away. What were you saying? I knew about Rap's absent-minded tendency to leave his gas burners on. So I arranged for a fully lit cake to be delivered to him on his 35th birthday. 
<laughs> you can hear the explosion as far as Booty Island. That's horrible. Steam and weenie indeed. Enough backstory. Let's move on. Elaine will never marry you. She loves me. She does not. She loves me. Nuh-uh. She loves me. Does not. Anyway, Elaine really loves me. Does not. Does two love me? Does not. Does two infinity? Does. Ah! Curse you and your diabolical debate skills. I've heard enough of your evil stories. Let's get this over with. But there'll be so many more horrible things I'd be wanting to tell you. I'm not listening to you anymore. See, I'm ignoring you. Ah, you'd better listen. La 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 la, I can't hear you. La 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 la. Very well, Freepwood. If you're going to act like a child, I'll help you get in the mood. I think you deserve a timeout, young man. Uh oh. <laughs> it's not locked. Your plan was flawless, LeChuck, except for one minor detail. That will be your downfall. He's taking Elaine on his roller coaster of death. I've got to reach her before she becomes his undead bride. What's happened to me? Dead, foggy, can't think. Mind swimming. Must concentrate and rescue Elaine. I've got to save Elaine. But how can I save Elaine when I'm just a little boy? Oh, if only I could think straight. Must clear my mind. <laughs> Welcome to the Big Whoop Carnival, little guy. Come on over here and meet your old pal, Dingy Dog. Oh, for crying out loud. It's a huge stack of meringue pies. Hey, what do you think you're doing? I just want one of those pies. Yeah? Well, I just want out of this stinking rat head. Life's tough, kid. Cope. Phew. Yeah, kid, what is it? Yikes, what is that horrible smell? It's a giant rat suit, you little brat. What did you expect, roses? Am I the only one nauseated by that terrible stench? Okay, okay, the suit smells. We've heard it. Everybody just come over and pick on the giant rat man. What are you guys doing here? It's blow the man down, the most fun in the midway. Hit the funny clown and win a fantastic prize. Watch the pies fly from the cannon with blinding speed and loud report. And if your aim is true, go home with your winnings. Join in the laughs with your happy sailor host, Warfrat, and his pal, Monty Meringue. What flavor? What? What flavor are the pies today? I don't know. Lemon meringue, I think. What kind of a stupid question is that? I want to shoot the cannon. I want to shoot the cannon. Sorry, little boy. You're too young. Blow the man down is for older kids. That's discrimination. How do I know it really works if I can't see it go off? Okay, kid. You want to see the cannon fire? Here we go. Stingy Dog really like in person. What are you asking me for? I'm just a giant rat. I'm not allowed to associate with His Highness, the great and mighty Dingy Dog. Could you uh, introduce me to Dingy Dog? No, I can't. Now go away. Never mind. Yo, Murray. It's you. Are you dead yet? You look different. Not dead, Murray. 
just cursed. Cursed! That's perfect! I'm cursed too. Let's join our cursed forces together, and together we can rule the world! <laughs> yeah. Let me get back to you on that. Good old fashioned sturdy kernel scale. Are you the real dingy dog? <laughs> you bet I am, and I'm here to make sure you have fun, fun, fun. What's your name, little boy? Okay, for starters, I'm not a little boy. I'm Guybrush Threepwood, Mighty Pirate. Well, shiver me timbers, that's well. Don't you patronize me. Well, <laughs> sounds like you've learned a very big word. You're a very bright little man. <laughs> that's well. <laughs> Laugh while you can. Soon I'll destroy LeChuck and your entire world will lie in ruin. You bet. Roll along and play now, son. <laughs> I need to get on the roller coaster. I'll bet you do. <laughs> it's fun. But that ride's only for bigger kids. I don't care if it's not safe. I have to ride it now. Oh, no, 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 son. <laughs> it's not that it's not safe for little kids to ride. It's just that you've got to be much, much older to really appreciate the sheer mind-numbing terror of the coaster. <laughs> but wait a few years and You'll have matured enough to ride. You'll also be able to buy candy and eat it whenever and wherever you want. <laughs> Just like us grown-ups can. How can I win one of these fabulous prizes? Well, that's easy, <laughs> matey. If I can't guess your weight or your age, you get to pick what you want. What's the catch? <laughs> There's no catch, it's just that easy. Just try to guess how much I weigh. All righty. <laughs> let Dingy have a look at you, little guy. Eh, let me see here. I figure a strapping little pirate like you must weigh ooh, 98 pounds. Ha! The joke's on you. I just look like a little boy. In actuality, I'm a mighty pirate weighing in at... 98 pounds. This is really embarrassing. Am I not eating right? I've been working out. I'll bet you can't guess how old I am. <laughs> bet you I can. A little fearsome buccaneer like yourself must be seven years old. Ha, wrong. I just so happen to be 20. <laughs> well, do you have any proof for your old pal Dingy Dog? You calling me a liar? <laughs> you bet I am. <laughs> I have my proof right here. Scum Actors Guild membership card. Guybrush Threepwood, age 20? I suppose you're right. <laughs> Pick your prize. Give me that anchor. Well, take it away, son. Congratulations. <laughs> Enjoy your stay here at Big Wolf. Look into your heart. I'm the prize you really want. What? You picked the anchor? Well, it's a really nice anchor, Murray. Sorry. Hi. Now it's a heavy pipe hand. What good is a dumb hunk of iron anyway? Now I've got a heavy pie pan full of shaving cream. It's not even a real anchor. What are you doing over there? I found this pie, mister. Huh? Oh yeah, thanks, kid. Shoot it, shoot it. Not right now. Oh, but I want to see the cannon fire. Be cheeks, half pint. Look, man, I pay your salary. You want me to tell the Chuck you've got unhappy kids running around here? Okay, okay, you little... <laughs> Did you just hear something? No. Weird. Maybe it's the acoustics of that smelly giant head. Shut up, kid! I'm
I'm a real talking skull. After all we've been through together. Fine. Take the stupid anchor. Yoo-hoo, stinky Mr. Rat. Hey, get out of there, you little punk. What are you gonna do about it, vermin boy? This'll teach you. You would have made a lousy undead monster anyway. I'm going to wait for an owner who understands my need to bring fear and pestilence on the likes of you! <laughs> now that's not very nice, little boy. Come on now, stop hitting your pal Dingy Dog. I'm not gonna warn you again, kid. Get out of here before I call up the demonic legion. <laughs> you better cut that out. If you value it. You're really starting to bug me, kid. <laughs> All right. <laughs> that does it. You're going down, little punk. <laughs> Ow, he bit me. Give me back that hair, kid. You're ruining the suit. It says snow cones. What kind of snow cones do you have? <laughs> what kind of cones did you ask? Why, I have every kind imaginable. I have the most distinct type of snow cones in the world. In fact, my cones are so original, so inventive, and so <laughs> unique that most are completely inedible. Let me list some for you. I have sweet cones, meat cones, cold cones, mold cones, bold cones with lime, cones with slime, <laughs> veggie cones, wedgie cones, hedgy cones. I used some of my neighbor's edge in that one. Cones with spice, cones with lice, berry cones, hairy cones, dairy cones, and the Christmas, oh, 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 merry cones. So, what do you think of that? Hmm. I'd like a plain snow cone, please. Okay, kid. <laughs> Bye now. Hairy. Mmm, peppery goodness. That meringue looks tasty. Ooh. Ew. The pepper helps, though. Great big keg of rum. Well, I'm glad to see that I'm featured among the attractions here. It's very lifelike. Well, I mean, deathlike. She was just going to powder her nose, and I haven't seen her since. I can't even see when I fell for that one again. Now stand still, boy, so I can flame broil. <laughs> oh.
It's a sturdy piece of rope. I had a feeling he'd turn up sooner or later. the enormous Dynamo Monk Electric arm of the giant Dynamo Monk Electric Snow Monk. There, it's soaked in oil and probably highly flammable. Cool. Haven't you been boiled in me molten pool of lava? <laughs> Elaine must have fiddled with me controls and rerouted the tracks. I she'll be the death of me yet. I mean, again. <laughs> but curses if I can't help but love the little woman. Eat flame and death, great word. <laughs> Not forget your arch nemesis Murray. Mark my words, I shall return to haunt you. Do you hear me? I shall return. <laughs> this is so unfair.
carnival is great, Dad. It sure is, son. But you know, rumor has it that the man who built this place is buried here. And they say that to this day, his frozen body remains in the tunnels somewhere beneath the amusement park.